Well, a very good morning to you. We are here in Las Vegas, Nevada at the NAB. Now, is it NAB show or NAB show? I've always heard it NAB. Yeah, I don't think they like to be called NAB. If you're international, my international uh, friends always call it NAB. NAB. But in the U.S., it's NAB. NAB yeah. show. And I have a great panel of people helping me out because I don't know what I'm doing here. You can take <laughs> me to CES and I can tell you all about gadgets and gizmos. But when it comes to broadcasting, it's a completely different business. I sit in front of the microphone. These these guys know what they're talking about. So let me introduce our panel. We're going to be broadcasting here. I should explain uh, all uh, day today till two, and then uh, nine to two uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, and a little bit Thursday too. In fact, just a little bit. Uh, we're going to do home theater geeks. But let me introduce to my left, of course, Kirk Harnack from Telos Corporation, who does our great This Week in Radio Technology show. And this is your show, Kirk. Yep, what is. is that? This that is, is, this that, is, our is that new the catalog? Telos catalog? It's a new catalog. In fact, there's a little surprise. I hear there's something you. in there I should know about. Yeah, you should know about this. Page 54 of the Telos catalog. Look at that. That's me and my uh, me and my Axia. <laughs> hey, that's great. We love the Axia. That's a nice picture. Yeah, it's good. It's really you great. sent it to us, so we appreciate that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Tony took that one. So, Kirk, uh, well, let me introduce. I'll talk to you in a second. Sure. Let me introduce the rest of the uh, panel um, today. We're going to do this for about an hour, and then we're going to go off on the road with this guy, uh, Scott Wilkinson from uh, the Home Theater Geek. Scott is the editor-in-chief of the Ultimate AV Magazine and a columnist for Home Theater Magazine. He's a regular on our radio show and does his own Home Theater Geeks podcast on our network. It's good to have you, Scott. Thank you. So glad to be here. And to uh, your right, Mr. Alex Lindsay of the Pixel Core. And Alex comes here all the time. This, this is, is my big show. This is nothing new for you. So I'm surrounded by NAB show veterans. <laughs> so I'm glad because I'm going to have you explain what's going on for you watching at home. This is the same place that we use at CES. We're in the South Hall uh, with that you know, great hall behind us. But what's so cool about this is, unlike CES where we have the the uh, earthquake subwoofers. subwoofers behind us. <laughs> this, this, we're in the display uh, pavilion, which means they've darkened the room so that you can see displays. I, I've never seen this room so dark and well lit. <laughs> <laughs> if there's anything broadcasters know, it's had a light. So, of course, we have uh, Brent By, our great lighting guy, and, and Roger, uh, who did our, Ambrose, who did our beautiful set. So it does look good, but I have to say it helps to have Grass Valley behind us looking green and beautiful. They're a switcher company, right? I yes, think they that's are. That's what they do. Yeah. Technology company, they yeah. get cameras and switchers, cameras and, and everything. All really, kinds of stuff. I've yeah. always owned them as a switcher company, but I'm, I'm I'm in radio, not TV. We don't use any Grass Valley. Right. But uh, when I was in college, yeah, we had this big old Grass Valley. Oh, that's the big switcher. switcher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tech yeah. TV had them too. And they're now related to Technicolor, right? I think they are. I think they're owned by Technicolor. Owned by Technicolor, yeah. Mm. Oh, well. Or so the other way around. One or the so other. One or the other. Let me they're, ask, they're, they're connected. Let me ask. Let's start with Kirk because you're a broadcast guy. Uh, you, you actually hear uh, for work. This is, I'm sure Telos has a big presence at uh, this event. Yeah, we do. Uh, it costs plenty of money. All these broadcast uh, equipment dealers uh, uh, and companies pay a ton to be here. Uh, and the idea, of course, is to get their message out to uh, to broadcasters to you know, sell their gear or sell so, their services. So as, just as CES is really aimed at consumer electronics dealers, this is aimed at broadcasters. At broadcasters, They yeah. will come here, and, and big broadcasters, right? I mean, Big and, and sometimes small. It's surprising. Uh, well, from all over the world, they come here. In fact, this is about my 23rd NAB. Wow. I can't believe I'm that old. Wow. <laughs> you don't look that old. You, are, you do look better dressed than the rest of us. <laughs> So, so uh, uh, and, and my first experience at NAB, 20-some years ago, was standing waiting for the NAB shuttle bus to uh, pick us up and go back to the hotel. And right. all around me, there are conversations going on in Italian, right. and Japanese, and Chinese, and German. And I'm thinking, uh, th you know, this, this Kentucky boy <laughs> is in the midst. I thought, oh, my goodness, what's going on? Well, in some ways, traditional broadcast gear is even more popular outside the U.S., you know, Radio's having a little struggle in the U.S., yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. booming in Asia. It, it is, absolutely. And the big reason for this, and by the way, you know, tell us about half, a little over half of our uh, our sales come from outside the U.S. Right. So we have domestic and international sales. In fact, we're having a big international reception tonight. Every radio domestic. station I've ever worked at has used Telos for its hot phone hybrid interface, yeah. phone interface. Uh, I, you know, now that I've used an Axia, I see a lot of Axias. Sure. That's the the, con the uh, control board. The and mixer. you're using Omnia processing the, too. The, the audio on the stream is being. I was talking processing. to Frank Mass at BE, and yeah. he said we sell a lot of Omnia processors. Yeah. This is the yeah. king of the hill. So, so you, you mentioned that it's growing internationally, and so many countries where where broadcasting used to be exclusively for the government to do. Right. They've allowed private ah, broadcasting. I get it. So in, in India, you've got 
hundreds and soon thousands of, of transmitters. Oh, I get it. Okay. And it's the same in many, many countries. Even even like even in Germany, private broadcasting is only about 20 years old in, in Germany. So there's still people are just getting their first or second cycle of, of getting new equipment. In, that makes sense. Like now I understand. Yeah. And Alex, though, it's not just radio. It's also uh, video. Uh, I mean, you come here too, right? This is a big event for, for your business. Well, absolutely. Because I mean, you're a video production company primarily. Yeah, and so you're seeing a lot of, uh, you know, you, you typically see a lot of new cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, mm -hmm. there's a, this That's is one a of the reasons we're here. We really want to choose some cameras. Well, and, and, and the, the technology is moving so fast right now. Oh, I mean, man. The, this is, I've, uh, you know, we, we've got, we look only a couple of years ago, uh, we were using little quarter inch or one third inch chips. And now, you know, Sony, uh, Sony and Panasonic are both uh, doing 35 millimeter uh, or two th or four thirds uh, chips mm. for a price that we can actually afford. So. <laughs> You know, w w when we thought about full frame sensors, we were thinking twenty thousand to two hundred thousand. Now we're thinking forty five hundred dollars or five thousand dollars. You know, that Sony um, announced the price for their NX one hundred, which is going to be about fifty eight hundred dollars without the lens. Uh, you're going to see. You know, Panasonic already has the AF one hundred out, which is forty five hundred dollars. Uh, and, and you're talking about film look, the, you know, a real film look. Um, you know, with both of those cameras, because uh, the sensor is is big enough. The sensor, same size as film. So you're going to have that short depth of field that right. you would expect from, uh, you know, from that. So, so we're seeing a lot of that. Uh, we're seeing. Uh, we're, I'm going to be bringing a little later today on the show. I'm going to bring some capture devices. Uh, miniaturization of capture devices is, is becoming really common. So <laughs> whether it's uh, AJA or there's the Ninja that I showed that I talked about at IBC, uh, Sound Devices has something that they're working on. So there's a, there's a whole bunch of those those types of things. A lot of field operation. People trying to get a hold of you know how we're going to shoot in the field, how we're going, and then streaming on the web. So everything everything from broadcast where you're spending a hundred thousand dollars for every piece of equipment that you're doing all the way to we want to you know stream live to the web all of those technologies uh, and everything in between are here why would uh, our audience care about NAB? I mean, you know our audience pretty well. You do that break weekly with me, and you I mean, I think I think that one of the things about uh, what, what we're seeing here oftentimes is the stuff you see here is what shows up at CES in a couple of years. You know, so what becomes so consumer. This is really a leading edge. This is th this is you know, uh, it starts off in broadcast, and they're charging one hundred fifty thousand dollars for the technology. Right, yeah. Then it up ends up in prosumer, and they're charging uh, you know. Uh, Five thousand or ten thousand dollars, and then it ends up in your camera that you're buying for five hundred bucks. So this is a preview to a lot of those technologies. It's also, um, I think that many people that are watching Twit are uh, geeks. Are geeks? <laughs> <laughs> and, any gadget? Yeah. And, and the thing is, is these are really fun yeah. gadgets. I mean, yeah. these are the 3D gadgets yeah. and the film look gadgets yeah. and the sound gadgets. And so there's a lot of things that are. I think more than anything else, it's just it's just good eye candy. Yeah. Well, you, just looking behind us, it looks better than anything uh, CES could ever offer. Yeah. What brings you uh, here, Scott Wilkinson? Well, I'm I'm going to be looking at displays, and here, of course, we're going to be looking at uh, professional monitors. But like Alex says, that those also trickle down mm -hmm. into the consumer world. Mm -hmm. So, I'm expecting to see some 4K. I'm expecting to see a lot of 3D, which I know you're not all that thrilled about, but. In my opinion, it's it's pretty much here to stay now, mm -hmm. primarily because manufacturers are behind it, and they're making these 3D TVs, and 3D is, is becoming essentially a feature, right. like online. We've talked about this before. And so I think it is here to stay, and in the movie theaters as well. You know, theaters can charge more money for a 3D uh, presentation. Well, and it's also becoming more affordable. I mean, people can shoot home movies now. Exactly, exactly. I mean, you've In got 3D. 3D. Yeah. But you can't play it back. I guess you could. You could, you could sure, you on, you on, your th on your 3D TV. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, so I, I too, am here for the trickle-down effect. Yeah. I'm also here because I really have a strong feeling that consumers f focus on their TV and their sound system and so on and so forth. But I'm interested also in how does that signal get to you? Right. And as a result, you know, one station may look better than another because they're using this piece of gear or this technology rather than that one. Um, so I'm really curious to see how um, the signal get is created and gets to you 
Uh, and that would help me as a consumer choose, well, I'm going to watch this rather than that, or I'm going to look for this movie when it comes out. For example, James Cameron is doing the keynote as we Right speak. now. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I apologize that we're not broadcasting that. We weren't allowed to broadcast it. We'll have clips from it later in the day. Right, exactly. And we will live stream his press conference. Which is coming up pretty soon. And we expect that what's actually going to happen is he's going to announce 60 frames. Either 48 or 60. We're not sure. Either oh. 68, uh, 60 or 48 frames 48 per second. 48 would be double the existing film frame rate. Correct. For 3D. Would be double the existing television frame rate. Exactly. Frame rate. And he thinks that that will greatly reduce the incidence of what I call 3D sickness. You know, some people right. get headaches really? and dizziness when they're watching 3D. Hmm. And with a faster frame rate, he thinks that that may very well uh, eliminate or greatly reduce would, anyway. Would that. The, if there's some question as to whether it'd be 48 or 60, can, can you see a difference in 48 and 60? Would you know? It will, it will. It'll look a little smoother. Yeah. In sixty. I mean, the yeah. I mean, it, it definitely. You get you get a couple and, extra frames. And make a difference. would I get any of the sickening soap opera effect that you get with these uh, one hundred twenty hertz TVs? That's a different story. Yeah. That's uh, that's the TV actually inserting right. frames right. that aren't in the original signal and not always getting the shapes right. Correct, correct. You, you definitely get the soap opera effect, and a lot of people really hate that. This yeah, would look yeah. more realistic, in fact. Sure. Exactly, sure. because and it's actual, it's real data. data. Sure. Yeah. It's real yeah. data. It's okay. not yeah. synthesized data. All right. Well, we'll have we'll cover that uh, in a little bit. So, I mean, I think, you know, there's things to, to see and do here Absolutely. for anybody who's interested in that technology, and we're going to be doing a lot of that. Uh, we also have a lot of guests who are come by. You and I are going to hit the road. We Pretty have the soon. Live View backpack, which lets us broadcast. That is so cool. <laughs> wirelessly. So you and I are going to head out to the show floor. Who are we going to meet for Home Theater Geeks? We're going to Panasonic, okay. where we're going to meet with... Um, well, we uh, don't need the names. Panasonic, okay. who else? Panasonic, company? JVC, yeah. and Sony. Good. So we're going to go to the big TV and the big, camera manufacturers. Exactly. See what they've got going mm -hmm. Uh, and Alex, I know you're going to be doing a lot for PixelCore here as well. Yeah, so we're going to be covering. Um, we'll be streaming probably about an hour a day, uh, you know, hour or two a day from PixelCore. From this, from this set. Uh, we're going to be doing one uh, Wednesday afternoon from the set, mm -hmm. and then the other times we're going to be shooting with an R live view on oh, the on the floor, wandering around. What we're going to do is we're going to wander around, ask people questions. It's going to be real like a uh, less of a broadcast. Everyone let, letting everyone just kind of see a window into. NAB, where yeah. we ask questions, yeah. and people will be able to ask questions on the chat room, and we'll at, we'll forward those questions to whoever we're with. And that's cool. Um, we, you know, we have we, we kind of have our shoot. You know, we're looking for new cameras and 3D, and you know, there's certain things that we're trying to figure out, and so people get to kind of join us. I brought my very high end uh, camera. This, oh, is bro. this is actually pretty cool. <laughs> this is so great, Ali Bubo. Then actually, I got this idea from you, Alex, because uh, you were at CES and you shot a ton of short videos yeah. with the uh, with the iPhone. And I thought, well, if I could shoot, shoot some short videos with the iPhone and bring them back here, right. um, we could have some little clips uh, from the field it's as fast well. And easy. So I'm going to try it anyway. How we'll see, cool we'll see that? how that Were works. Were you using that little device? Yeah. 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 See, so it gives you, it's real steady. It has a little It microphone. really steadies it. It makes it much easier to grab onto it. You're not putting your finger over the, win over the, over the uh, lens. This is right. about the lowest like tech, high tech device ever. And then you, pl <laughs> you plug in this microphone so I can talk to myself. <laughs> and uh, so I, and we're going to try it. I don't know. It's just kind of a crazy, uh, crazy, it works crazy great. notion. Yeah, well, I was impressed with what you were able to do with it. So it's both a mix of high-tech and low-tech yeah. stuff yeah. that we, <laughs> we do here, I have to say. Also, later tonight, if you're in the Vegas area, we're going to do a um, photo walk uh, for the Mostly Photo Show with Lisa Betney. That will we'll be meeting at 7 p.m. at the Bellagio. You can go to uh, mostlyphotoadventures.com if you haven't rsvp for that. We'd love to see you out there. We've got 50 or 60 people going to be showing up. That's going to be very cool. That. I'm going to be, be there for fun. that. Uh, and then what else? we got so much going on. Um, is that is that everything? I think that's everything. I'm looking at Eileen Rivera. Well, you've got the... You've got the Broadcast Minds oh, thing tomorrow. I forgot about that. The Broadcast Minds. We're going to stream. New Tech is putting on a panel mm -hmm. uh, with somebody from the NBA, Helmuth. Uh, I can't remember his first name. Joe mm -hmm. Helmuth from mm -hmm. the NBA. Uh, Mark Fredo from St. John's University. Adam Carolla mm -hmm. and uh, me. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about the future of broadcasting. So that's going to be interesting. We're streaming broadcasting anyway. Right. Uh, we do want to thank uh, New Tech for providing our TriCaster HD 850 HD. That's what we're using to switch the show today. That's why those lower thirds look so much better. <laughs> uh, also, Bob Heil, who bought, popped by and dropped off these a look, bunch these of These sound great. Yeah, they, they really great? do. One of the reasons we use, we, we tried a whole bunch of mics on the stage is, uh, here over the years. And the, uh, we use the PR40s in studio, but they actually are great for a, an event like this because they cut out all that background noise. You just hear a low rumble of people behind us. But you can still hear us pretty clearly. Yeah, so yeah I was talking to Bob before we started, and uh, he was explaining a little bit about how 
he has designed these mics to reject anything outside, from behind, basically. Right. He's got a fairly wide pickup pattern across here so that you can be a little off axis and still hear right. it pretty good. Right. But behind it, there's nothing. So and there's some great. microphone technology here, too. Exactly. Uh, speaking of analog. Um, Kirk, we, you, you bring us a bunch of people, I think. We are. At, uh, in, in, at 10 o'clock, just about 45 minutes from now, some uh, broadcasters from New Zealand. Oh, that'll be fun. And talk about the uh, the Christchurch uh, earthquake and, and what broadcasters did to get through oh, that. Oh, that's awesome. Keep broadcasting. That's great. We are watching, Kirk and I are both watching the chat room, and so we're keeping an eye on uh, what's going on uh, there. We will be streaming that Broadcast Minds event. What time does that start tomorrow? 6, 6. p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time. So you can watch that live.twit.tv. That should be a lot of fun. We're going to bring up Larry Jordan uh, and uh, talk to him about uh, NAB in just a second. We've got a lot of guests, but before I want to, before I do that, I want to mention our friends at Netflix. Who are, we have some good sponsors. Yeah, we really do. I'm so pleased. <laughs> uh, Netflix, of course, you don't. I don't. You know, the only question I have when I when we, we said let's do ads for Netflix is, well, is there anybody who listens to Twitter who doesn't have a Netflix <laughs> subscription? <laughs> oh, you. Well, would you get one, please? Go to netflix.com slash Twitter. I shouldn't even have to explain how great this is. Of course, Netflix started as DVD by mail. They still do that in as little as one business day. You know, I found out that many post, office have, post offices have Netflix scanners in the post office. When they get the disc, they will scan it. That lets Netflix know they can ship the next disc before it even hits the Netflix. Wow. It's a distribution facility. Wow. It's pretty amazing. That's pretty cool. But it's not as fast as streaming. Netflix streaming, mm -hmm. which is instant. And I tell you, uh, on my iPad, on my uh, laptop, uh, uh, on my Roku box, my PS3, Xbox 360, Wii, many DVD players, a lot of TVs. I just uh, saw uh, Panasonic's Viera ad, mm -hmm. and they have Netflix on there. Um, LG has Netflix on it. Mm -hmm. And when you watch the streaming, you, you basically have a choice of tens of thousands of movies that you can watch instantly. Uh, it's just fantastic. Um, I, I'm trying to think of a movie that I... Oh, I know what I watched the other day that everybody should see. 2001, A Space Odyssey. Really? You know, it's fun to see that again. Here we are in 2011, <laughs> 10 years after 2001. <laughs> and we're still... <coughs> But we do have video phone calls. But we're still not walking on the moon. And right. Where's that space station? Heading to Mars and all of that stuff. <laughs> Our Netflix subscription has paid for itself with the iPad in the bedroom, with the little, uh, my little seven-month-old tyke, isn't and he's awesome. and we're watching Caillou. Isn't that great? Isn't that yeah? Yeah. It, Tons it, of kids. It's all about stuff. Caillou. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you know yeah. about Caillou too? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> my my uh, my son just sits there and just absorbs massive amounts of Caillou. Yep. We want you all to go right now to Netflix dot com slash twit if you haven't signed up yet sign up now which one's my camera I can, ah there it is netflix i'm talking to you <laughs> netflix.com <laughs> slash twit we thank them for their it's support the one without a tally light so let's say hi to larry jordan from larry jordan and associates he is the president there in agora california and i'm looking at your card larry it says you help editors find work improve skills and keep clients happy oh can we get larry's microphone Hold on a sec. It would be not there. We go. Now there you we go. go. Now you're <laughs> in the and there you go again. He's off again. And now, whoop! There we and go. Now he's on, on again. again. <laughs> it's, it's We're just going to play with you all day, Larry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so what does that mean? Uh, do you, uh, video editing? Well, you think about it. There's there's three real goals that we have that that all of us need to meet. One is you got to find work. Once you get the work, you got to do a good job with it. And you're getting hired by somebody to do the work, so you want to make sure that you keep your clients happy. This reminds me of the Pixel Core a little bit, Alex. Yeah. It's kind of what you do with the Pixel. And you, you you look around here. You know, I've been wanting to say, Leo. First, thank you for letting me be on. It's an honor to be joining this august group <laughs> it is of august. individuals. <laughs> it is august. The brain trust, as I call it, in my <laughs> on my iPad, watching you guys. Anyway. It's, I've wanted to say this all along. We are sitting in the skybox overlooking the vast NAB trade show. It I is. feel, <laughs> We're in I the feel already fulfilled at just having been here. <laughs> I think this is the first skybox uh, they've ever had. It and and uh, one of the things I love about NAB, and, and one of the things that I know you guys are all excited about, is that this is the perfect opportunity for people to tell stories, whether you tell stories with cameras or That's you tell stories point. with audio. Yeah. This is the toy store. I'm sorry. This is the professional <laughs> operation <laughs> from which the, the idea of being able to walk endless acres filled with toys. I, I, I mean, don't, tools. I don't, I don't yeah. want to. Alex, I told him I wouldn't tell this story, but I have. Last year, I was in Central Hall. And I almost bought a helicopter. There it was. It was there was three helicopters parked <laughs> inside the central hall. They were hall. selling helicopters. 
And I called my wife. I said, wife, I have to buy a helicopter. <laughs> now, she is a very <laughs> smart woman. Wife is a smart And she woman. says, she says now, she does not say no. She does not say you can't afford it, both of which would be true. <laughs> she instead has this long, dramatic beat, and she says, where are you going to park it? Oh, <laughs> good, good. Very practical. That was it. That was it. At that point, I was I was dead in the water because uh, there was uh, the, the the pool just took over the whole helicopter parking place. I was stuck. I think what you do is you paint a big H on the roof and you land it on the roof. Mm. That's the key. Oh, you've seen my roof. <laughs> <laughs> so Larry is very well known. Anybody who's visited Linda.com for your final cut uh, tutorials are great. And we have a podcast. Uh, one of the things that you do so well is you cover all of technology. And you, if it's got electrons, you're working with it. Yeah. What we do is my podcast, which is Digital Production Buzz, focuses in depth on analysis of exactly what's here at NAB. So the microphones that you're using or the lights that you've got, our job is to help producers, directors, camera people to make the most of their gear, not only in terms of where they want to invest their money, but how you use it to tell stories, whether we're talking with independent filmmakers or we're talking with people like James Cameron or Leo, you were on the show. I remember we, we did this about three years ago. You and I were, I was on your show at the same time you were on my show. Yeah, we cross. And it was the first time the I've ever done a cross live. Cross the beams. Cross purposes there. Yeah. It was very cool. And, and the, the, the breadth that you provide combined with the depth that we provide is a wonderful way of covering an entire industry. And What's so what we're doing this year is that you guys are here in the skybox and we're doing a series of in-depth interviews at our, our booth, specifically talking to, well, how does it work? In other words, you've got this, uh, HAA just announced some new gear this morning. We're going to see new cameras from Sony. We're going to see new cameras from Canon. We're seeing new cameras from JVC. We're seeing new uh, um, uh, connectivity options with HAA and Blackmagic. And then we've got brand new Adobe, Avid, uh, Final Cut all coming. Well, this was a rumor, and I wanted together. to ask you about this, Larry, because uh, the rumor was that maybe Apple would announce the new Final Cut either here or at the Final Cut users' meetings. Uh, well, Apple has never attended, well, has not attended NEB for the last three years. Right. So there's no Apple booth here at NEB. So what surprised me is they decided to speak at the, f at the user group here at NEB because they haven't been here for the last couple of right. years. Now, you and I read the same rumors, which right. is that, that they are rumored to be announcing. Now, I, it's true, I've published that I have had the great pleasure of seeing the new oh, version yeah. of Final Cut. So I was invited up to Cupertino in February with about 40 other people, and they premiered what the new version is going to look at. And I published in my blog the fact that it is jaw-dropping. It is, it is a total change. But what they uh, wouldn't let me say is when it's going to ship or what it's going to cost or all the stuff that everybody here at the table is wanting to, to rip know. out of, wants to know. And the other thing that surprised me is that they were then announcing it here or talking about it here at, at the Super Meet. So my hope is that that rumor is in fact true, and my hope is that by tomorrow night I can start to talk about the stuff I've been thinking about for great. the last six weeks, because there is so much to share with you. I can't wait. It's just going to be great if, stuff. If they do drop it tomorrow, come back. and. Uh, and All you have to do is say yes, and I will be here. <laughs> but your, Ooh, producers, like that, your producers guard you oh. very well, so <laughs> <laughs> it's nice for you to invite me, and now i got to get them to say yeah, yes, they too. have to well, say yes, and we moved, we moved, uh, We're going to record this week in media on Wednesday. We moved it from Tuesday you to Wednesday. I was just um, like, mm, I think I'm going to move it to the other side of that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the ben benefit now is, is that now we've got Adobe, we have Avid, and we've got, uh, hopefully... I don't know, but hopefully Final Cut, being able to talk about the, they have three different views of what constitutes editing and what constitutes storytelling, and being able to talk about that on Alex's show is going to be great. Right. I, you know, and I think that this is the other message about the National Association of Broadcasters show, which is where we are, in case you're just tuning in, is that, uh, yes, this is for pros, but uh, that that is a broader spectrum of people than it ever has been before, and a lot of the people uh, who are watching today, people like you, Larry, do their, their own shows, uh, uh, this is this is a great opportunity for people to find out what's out there for them. I mean, y what you can do now, in your with a backpack of stuff, yeah. is is profound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it really when you look at the quality, even from a, the little consumer cameras or <laughs> the small prosumer cameras. You look at like an XA10, you know, Canon XA10, which is like it it has the form factor of a consumer camera, but it's got XLR ends and it's got well. Look at this good shot right now. That's a two thousand dollar JVC camera you're looking right. at right now. I mean it. It looks great with, with, with somebody who knows how to do lighting. By the way, I'm a little dark. I just want to say. <laughs> it was, <laughs> and it's just a reflection of your humor, really. That's all it oh, is. Oh, that's it. It's, I should have worn my lighter face today. I had no idea we were going. 
But uh, it really is amazing. We couldn't do this if, if we're using basically consumer slash prosumer. And in my in my house, I have eight eight of these little consumer cameras that are hooked yeah. up to speed rail, and just kind of just kind of move them around. I, and I remember 20 years ago when I was doing live television as a director. For me to do what you're doing here at the show with a four camera shoot and and the people that you've got here would take a crew of 20 people and it cost me half a million dollars. Yes, right. And you guys are doing it not out of a backpack. You got way. I mean, you got thousands of dollars a gear here, but it's a fraction of what you would have had to spend 20 years ago. Oh yeah, absolutely. Kirk, what are you expecting to see uh, from the radio side? Uh, any? I mean, are there still big new announcements, <laughs> exciting new gear? Is Harris going to bring the latest transmitters? <laughs> uh, well, actually, yes, they have brought the latest <laughs> transmitter. And in, it, it's, it seems to be more incremental in, in, in technology. Yeah. Well, it's a mature technology. Yeah, it really is. Uh, more countries are going with some kind of digital radio, DAB Plus, for example, in Australia. Uh, we've got some guests. We tell us about that. Um, so I should. Yeah, I want to understand that a little bit better. Right now, uh, radio, terrestrial radio in the U.S. is primarily an analog broadcast signal, AM and FM. There is this HD. Right. Right. Are all broadcasters doing that? You know, quite a few are, but quite a few are not. I'm part owner of, um, of seven radio stations, and none of ours are, but we're all very small market. Is that it's you need a new transmitter, new gear? Yeah. yeah, yeah By or, the way, it's not high def, it's hybrid digital. It, yeah, well, HD, uh, they said HD means uh, nothing. It just means HD. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, must, I must tell you. If, if I mean, is it a digital broadcast? Yes. It uh, is digital. A, H, HD it's radio, high quality. H, HD radio is, is digital subcarriers on either side of ah. the FM analog signal yes. or the AM. And it's actually pretty robust. I mean, yeah, and, and the FCC has allowed more power now to broadcasters. There's always c controversy about about <laughs> more power, more interference to the to the next guy. Is it going to take off? You know, I don't know. I, I've sat in some Ford cars with HD and, and some new uh, graphic user displays, the human interface. You get so and much they're information. Oh, they're and beautiful. It's, yeah. uh, I've had HD in my car. I don't at the moment because I just switched stereos. But you know, if given a choice um, between, uh, I, I'll give you an example. Uh, I was in Memphis, Tennessee, and there was a hip-hop station there that normally I wouldn't listen to, just don't care for hip-hop music, and on FM, it's all squashed, and, right. you know, it just punched to their HD version of that same station. It's like, oh, wow, yeah. I can hear... I can hear the explicit lyrics now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! What are they saying? So I like this so much better. And, 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 other, and other countries, which aren't set up on quite the U.S. model, where where uh, broadcasters, uh, you know, have big sticks and they want to control the marketplace. In other, in in Europe, you do have digital broadcast that's done a bit better than HD is done here. And other in Korea, in, in Australia, they're doing DAB broadcasting. That's that's going all right. In Brazil, they're rolling out HD there. Will we see DAB in the U.S. or is, no, is a, HD it, is our standard? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's different licensing. What about, now, I've had for 10 years a car that had RDS in it. And nobody's right. ever done that well, either. Now, y yes and no, yes and no. Back when RDS first came... It, what it, is that, radio data services? Uh, yeah, and uh, you're driving around in France, where in, in, in Fr or other countries where you have a, a, it's a, a model. It's widely used Yeah, where yeah. you have a model where you have a number of transmitters across the countryside with your station. Well, you could drive across France and listen to, say, I did some work for it, Vibration in Orléans. Yeah. So uh -huh. you tune in Vibration, you drive all around Central France and it just switches to so the RDS nearest is doing that automatically. Yeah, I've been doing yeah. that for 25 years. Yeah. Uh, in, in the US, we just use it for a little bit of tagging. Yeah, uh, occasionally you'll see, oh, this is a folk music hey, station. Kiss FM in LA had a deal. You could go to the website and pay a few uh, a few pence to, put an to, ad on. to, to have your, your girlfriend's name put on there. Oh, is that sweet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Will you so, marry me? Sh shout out, do, do a shout out. <laughs> and in, in there, there's, there are other incremental improvements. Here's a big improvement and we're, this is one that we're showing over at our booth, and I think some other people are doing this too. And that is w one problem in the music industry is this is this real clipping that goes on with mastered music nowadays. And for broadcasters to put the, put that on the air, it starts to sound really bad. You mean they're mastering it clipped? They're mastering it square waves on the CDs. Why is that? Because they want it, the that's the sound. Producers want it to be loud. Oh well, they're compressing the dynamic range. Not, not only they're hyper chopping off the top also of this real wave by golly diode clipping. Oh, wow. oh, I didn't and, and realize that. And here's the thing. Music record producers don't have the same tools available to them to make it loud as broadcasters do. All right, I, yeah, I get loudness is not everything, but you know, if you compare in two things, the louder our brain says it sounds better. Well, we've got technology now that actually does declipping. It restores waveform that wasn't there that's before. Like that's wow. like interpolating frames into exactly. your video. And exactly. Exactly. We, we got a, we got a and guy. The, and the producers are going, oh, foiled again. <laughs> 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 but now, but consider it's asking it me in the great. chat room. What's yeah. the bit rate for HD radio? Ah, Do you know? It, it's it's quite variable. If a station is only running one HD, it's 96 kilobits per second. Oh, it's not very high. Uh, it's it's no, it's not real high. It's using the it's using an al a, an algorithm that is not so unlike. Uh, 
H E A A C, but okay. it's not H E A A C. It's 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 a proprietary. That was the uh, the format used by the Sony Mini Disc players. No, that, right? that, that's a track. That's a track. What's a track? H E A A C is quite sophisticated, quite oh, okay. nice, um, uh, and and allows great entertainment quality at about 50, 48, 50 kilobits. Oh, okay. Per so ninety six wouldn't be bad. Yeah. Now, but some broadcasters are dividing their allocation up into smaller bits, which starts to sound not not as good. But for example, in Philadelphia, you've got CBS station there running four different sports formats on their four HDs. Hmm. So if you're a sports nut, you're dividing those. You that can 96 tune in, in all in these quarters. different sports things yeah. on, on a Philly yeah. station, a CBS station. So see, there's a lot of cool technology going on. Absolutely, uh, amazing yeah. technology. Yeah, we'll talk more about the, about this later and, and, and tomorrow. But I'm really excited about technology that allows listeners to interact in a meaningful way with the broadcaster in real time. Mm. And they're doing this in the UK. The BBC. This I'm interested BBC in. has I'm pioneered interested. this. Yeah. And, and th there's a player in the UK that'll. It's called IRC Chat. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> you won't believe it. What are they doing? These guys think you of can, everything. You it's called the Twitter. It is amazing. A, a, a listener can do a video call to the DJ. And of course, the producer oh, will allow great. or disallow it. Uh, chat voice, chat text, of course, and, and, and chat video. Oh, that's really there's, there's things like that. That's This is exciting, I have to say. Who's, work, who's yeah. producing that, that, that technology? Well, the BBC came out with a player, and they have said, okay, all you commercial broadcasters, you need to glom on to what we're doing, and we'll right. make it totally... We, you're never two clicks away from the BBC UK radio player. You're never two clicks away to any small station, no matter how big or small, in the UK. And stations that are so equipped then have also two-way. Hey, if you're listening to, the, if you're listening to a, a broadcast on a device that's got a two-way connectivity, why not you know, engage the listener with... The possibility. Kirk's like the Rush Limbaugh of he's slamming the table. He's, <laughs> of, he's knocking things over. I love it. It's like big time wrestling with Kirk Harnack. <laughs> right. So Kirk Harnack, he's uh, with us. Of course, he is a, with the Telos Corporation, but also does a great show this week in Radio Tech. And you're going to do the show from the. the we'll do it, do it Wednesday. I got a couple of great guests lined up. In fact, one of them is is a guy lovely guy dan mcquillan from broadcast bionics in the uk he's got the inside scoop on the tech i was just talking so if about. you're interested in dab yeah. and everything else uh that will be a great show yeah. to watch yeah. wednesday what time uh wednesday at uh, not same time as right 9 a.m yeah okay larry i want to thank you for coming by uh your, my pleasure. your podcast is again digital production buzz.com production buzz.com it's right all there one on the word screen. digital yeah. production buzz.com you and should listen once in a while it would be wonderful to have you i might learn in. a thing or two no i'm not <laughs> going to say that you already know as much as you need but we would love to i have know you. one thing the red shirt guy never makes it to the end of the show <laughs> <laughs> uh oh <laughs> scott i'm really sorry <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My it's gracious. so nice to, to see you again, Larry. And Thank you, Leo. Uh, do come back. Uh, af I have a feeling we're going to hear something. We, about oh, yeah. I, do, I'm, I don't know. I can't promise. I know. But uh, I would be shocked if it did not happen. Yeah. That's exciting. So we'd love to know more about that. Thank come you. back in, er, later in the week. When Absolutely. Thank about. you. Larry Jordan from Larry Jordan and Associates. Digital Production Buzz dot com. I'm going to briefly uh, mention another sponsor while we bring in some more people from the NAB show. We're here in Las Vegas. Official streaming partner for the National Association of Broadcasters. That's kind of funny. It just shows you that they've really become, they're very digital aware of We used to days. think of broadcasters as terrestrial, terrestrial. transmitter tower yeah. mm -hmm. broadcasters, mm -hmm. and the meanings changed. And for people who make equipment for content providers like you, like me, New then, tech's all over here. Yeah. I mean, this is a this is a big yeah. show. I'm sure Grass right. Valley wants to get in that business sure. too. I mean, sure. this is a yeah. this is where it's happening. Um, I do want to mention very briefly our friends at Squarespace.com who make this broadcast possible. The fast and easy way to publish a high quality website or blog. I want you to go to Squarespace.com/twit right now. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry, I can't help it. I have to watch Eileen crawl around in front of me. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, <laughs> Squarespace.com slash twit. If you want to get your own free 14 trade trial of the best hosting and software together for your new website or a friend's new website, or as Alex Lindsay once did for the restaurant that you're sitting at there <laughs> in, their, in the restaurant. It's just so easy. Well, and the thing is, you, you they don't, don't have a website. I'll fix that for you. I'll let me, fix let me, it. Oh, yeah, all right, come on. My sister, you know, I, I think we talked about it. My sister put up her, she's not technical. She's not a technical. And, and she wanted to put up a little blog about shooting uh, family photos and so on and so forth. So she put familiarlight.squarespace.com. And it, it really she put does, the whole thing together. That was beautiful. It's a beautiful site. It really does begin with the website, though. If you're going to, we're talking about, uh, you know, using 
uh, broadcast technology, do a podcast, or do your own streaming video. But it's got you. If you don't have a website, you don't have anything. You have to start with the website. Well, and it really is truly a great way to start. My my sister was telling me over the weekend. I was in Pittsburgh, and she was. She writes the, the blog, and my, my mom actually edits it, but she goes up to Squarespace and logs in. And I, if, I'm, if my sister's not technical, my mom is really not technical. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and, there's a, um, and, and it's just totally doable. It's totally workable. And, and that's, I think it's, a, it's just an incredible technology. Now that's Burke's head. Squares. <laughs> <laughs> the little hand comes up. It's like cousin it. The little <laughs> hand comes up. Squarespace.com slash twit. The secret behind exceptional websites. Google Maps, Flickr, Photo Display, the Twitter widget, the forum, the forum builders, the blog module, the photo galleries. It's all there. It's easy to implement. Point and click sliders, and you will have a great looking website. Squarespace.com slash twit. We thank them so much for their support for this week in tech the network and for our special live broadcast. This broadcast and all of our broadcasts from the NAB show will be available on our Twit Live special feed, which is twit.tv slash specials. I guess we'll, we'll just do one from each day. We're going to also do a photo walk tonight with uh, Lisa Bettany, Mostly Photo, and that'll be a part of our Mostly Photo show. I don't think we're going to stream that, so uh, but you can watch it in the Mostly Photo show. And then tomorrow, this is a big deal. I want you all to go to the Broadcast Minds event. Uh, that New Tech is putting on with me, Adam Carolla, NBA, St. John's University, talking about the future of digital broadcasts. The Broadcast Minds event will broadcast at live 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern at live.twit.tv. Derek Smith is here. He's from SpectraCal. Hello, Derek. Hello. You brought a box. Yes, I did. Is this a SpectraCal box? Yes, it is. Would you show us? A little yeah. show and tell here. What do you, well, first of all, what is SpectraCal? SpectraCal is a company that we founded five years ago for developing software for calibrating display technology. You know, this is so funny because I was just asking somebody the other day at Tech TV, as you're broadcasting, there is a guy in a booth called The Shader who stands there the whole day tweaking knobs to make sure the color is right in the broadcast. And I say, why don't we have a shader? Don't we need a shader? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess we don't anymore. I guess it doesn't matter. But but for people who really care about color, uh, you need to calibrate your monitors before you can even know what you're getting. Yes, and there are uh, industry standards for calibrating monitors. Are, uh, are, let me ask you, uh, before we talk about the color yes. box, are compu the kind of monitors we use for computers, are they can they even get close to calibrated or Oh absolutely. They yes, can they can, yes. Really? And we have software for calibrating PC monitors as editing workstations as well. So it is possible to get a true picture out of these things. Yes. Okay. Now the question is, is it the same calibration as it is the standard, I mean, for uh, computer monitors as it is for uh, video? Uh, TVs and, and broadcast monitors and so on? Uh, it depends on the type of material. If you're primarily editing for photos, um, there are standards for that, mm -hmm. Adobe standards. Um, but if you're editing for video, we can calibrate them to the video standards Interesting. as well. Mm -hmm. So the gamut of the display, things like that, don't, that aren't as important. The ability to display enough colors, that kind of thing. Well, yes. you need to you the need to have the right space. gamut. You need to have the right sufficient gamut. I guess. Sufficient yeah. gamut, yeah. And a lot of the newer laptops typically have what they call a the wide gamut, um, which is closer to the Adobe RGB. So that's uh, good, so or is that then, bad? Uh, that's good, and then we can bring them in so okay. they match the Rec. 709 uh, D65 standards for video. So color spaces uh, yes. is, is what we're talking about here. Adobe RGB is a color space. Yes, and that's the widest space that's currently available. I, I, I would beg to differ only to say that very commonly people use the word space and gamut Okay. Interchangeably, They're different. Yes. and they are in fact different. Yes, and I'm not using them interchangeably. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad you brought that up because gamut, gamut is how wide the, the, the it's number. It's the actual range of colors that a right. TV can display. But a space isn't width. It could be. Uh, it's well, a space. The, spa the space is actually. If, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think if I'm not mistaken, the space is the mathematical description of color. So right. it could be RGB, HSV, it could, could, it could be, be YCBCR, which is called otherwise known as component. Now you're talking video as opposed to video, computer, right. but it's the same concept. But we right. have, yeah, LUV, LAB, there's yeah. a there's a multiple color bunch races. of them. Yeah. And in fact if you use Photoshop, you've seen all of these, yes. you've played with all of these. Is that the same for video? Do we talk about the same well, primarily for video, um, the um, D65 Rec. 790 standards um, are typically and that's XYY. a color space. That is a, a defined color space. It also has a defined gamut, a defined gamma, mm -hmm. and so those are all defined standards. And so, a monitor to uh, be 
complete to do the right job displaying video has to support those standards. Yes. And then you come in and make sure that white is white, black is black, blue is blue, and green is green. That is correct, that we match the standards. Yeah. Yeah. So is that what this does, the color box? Yes. This box, the color box, its purpose is to be able to take live video. Turn around. If you look over to your right, you'll see the monitor so you can see what we're seeing. And I'll hold it while you talk. All yeah. Right. Alex is good at this. There Watch. Alex used to work for uh, The Price is Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the purpose of this is it's got an SDI input, an HDMI input, and an HDMI output. It's got uh, four preset LUTs for changing gamma levels and uh, look four up tables. creative LUTs um, for doing creative. And so in our demo in our booth, <laughs> we're showing the, the lookup tables in this device um, being able to desaturate everything but red or do an inverse gamma so it looks like a negative or we can change the gamma curves, and we can do that all on live streaming video in real time. Wow. How much is so, this? Uh, we haven't announced the price on this, but it's going to be very This is a great time. Price. It's, <laughs> it's a great time to do just that. Announce the price. Well, kind of, kind of the quick history on SpectraCal. Again, we formed the company five years ago, primarily for the home theater DIY space. Oh, interesting. For people to so calibrate you were, their displays you were, for themselves. So the people, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, See, I, their own a lot, lot of my readers uh, certainly use SpectraCal. Use SpectraCal. Uh, Is it a color rimeter or color uh, yes. photo spectrometer? What? Yeah, there's a number of inexpensive ones that we support as well as They're the little screen ones. suckers. Yes, they stick right on the screen. Or, uh, or there are those that, that point at the screen. Yeah, and we support 35 different color rimeters, spectroradiometers, um, pretty much all the popular ones that are out there. And that's been our primary market for the last five years. Last year, we came to NAB and basically used it as kind of research. Okay, what can we bring to the post and broadcast markets? We did a lot of research, and we came back this year with three new products specifically targeted at colorists, post-production, and broadcast technologies. Um, we have a new product out for display calibration um, that we call SpectraColor, and it's targeted specifically at the calibration of monitors in studios and production facilities. We've got another product that is called Color Map that is designed for LUT manipulation for creating or designing creative LUTs. And then we also have the hardware that you can apply LUTs to in real time to see your creative LUTs take effect on the video stream that you're editing. And so we're announcing those three new products. And in the, how SpectraCal brings out products is we will usually open up a forum or a research group. And this is what we're announcing this week. We're bringing these products in, but we're not saying they are complete. We're saying they're ready to use, but we want feedback from the industry on the exact features, feature sets they need for this industry. And I can tell you, from my own experience, SpectraCal is great at customer feedback and implementing what they hear. So, so you're, you're familiar with it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Derek, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate All right, it. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. All right, thank you guys. The SpectraCal color box, SpectraCal.com, if you want to know right. more about that. Nice thank to you. meet you. All right, thank you guys. Uh, we're going to pause for a moment. The other guy is uh, in the chat room. He's going to take a shower, so uh, we're just going to <laughs> hold on for a moment. And I'm going to I'm going to wander off. Okay, Alex, you want to go out I'm in the gonna field? Go, I'm going to go out in the field, do some research. Okay. So it was good. It was uh, good. We'll see you. Nice to see you, Alex. I'll, see, I'll be back at noon. Back at noon to do a show, or I think you you're you're here at noon. Okay. Am I here at noon? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I'm here at noon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just going to do. I, I got to go pick some stuff up for noon. I want to have you got some stuff things to, to do. Show. Oh, you're going to get some gadgets. I'm going to go get oh. some gadgets. We got to have some things okay. some things to look All at. Right. So, All right. So we're 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 taking a little break while. Uh, oh, and now the iPod Man 715 is also taking a shower. So, ah, wow. Uh, we'll we'll let hey. a couple of our uh, <laughs> listeners. We only have ten listeners. So <laughs> when two of them go, that's a twenty percent drop. So <laughs> I have to uh, I have to be careful. Uh, oh, and now Baba wants to put his pizza in the oven. Oh, my God. Well, everybody, take a bathroom break. We'll be <laughs> we're at the NAB show in Las Vegas, Nevada. By the way, they were at great pains to say we're not at NAB, although colloquially that's what everybody says. You're going to NAB? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to NAB. Right. But they want to make sure that you understand there's a difference between NAB and the NAB show. show. So, Kirk, would you mind just cooling it on the NAB thing? All right. <laughs> what I find fascinating that in, in, in this in this country NAB is specified as NAB, whereas the other big show that I used to cover, the National Association of Music Merchants, NAM, NAM, NAM. very clearly NAM. NAM. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, nobody wants to say NAMN. To, to us in English in America, NAB is a word. Good. And well, it, yeah, it's a, it's a cracker, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah. NABs. Uh, what the Nabisco cheese, cheese cracker thing? 
Well, that Nabisco. must be a Nashville thing. Uh, you call him Nabs? It's a, it's a southern thing. I don't call him Nabs. You, you say Coca Cola? Hey, you, you, you want an RC and a Nab? Some Nabs? <laughs> a moon pie? RC and a moon pie? Kirk is funny because he has a little bit of Nashville, a little bit of Singapore. It's all mixed in there, <laughs> and I never really know. It's a little controversial. Yeah, I said that for the, my I know my you did. New Zealanders, I know you did. Yeah. <laughs> for your New Zealanders. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of, this is uh, this is an interesting event because unlike uh, 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 CES, which is 150,000, 130,000 people, this is a little small. It's about 90,000 people. I mean, it's a it's a big show, but it doesn't have the the kind of frenzy that CES right. seems to have. Right. You're not, you're here. You know what you're going to do. You know what you're going to see. Does it occupy as much space in the convention center as uh, CES? I saw that the, the the North Hall's full. Yeah. Central Hall's full. South Hall is pretty We're full. We're in the South Hall. It's, it's full. It's, it is. It is pretty full. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I, I guess, guess the difference is that there aren't a lot of outboard shows. There aren't a lot of hotels uh, that's, yeah, okay. in which there's a bunch of stuff happening right. as there is right. at CES. Right. 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 And before they expanded the convention center, there certainly used to be. Yeah. Uh, the, all the new media was at the Sands, for example. Ah, interesting. Uh, years and years ago. Sure, but sure. The, since they added the South Hall, yeah. which is what five, six years now, or yeah. maybe more even, you know, they they all blur together to me. <laughs> okay, so the other guy's back from his shower. Uh, looks like the pizza's in the oven. So let's introduce our next guest. <laughs> <laughs> that's two way. See, that's yep. interactivity. There you go. That's the it. The chat man. room gives us demands, and we respond. Uh, joining us right now is Eric Edmeads from Kerner. That's right. Hi, Eric. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Tell us about Kerner.com. Well, Kerner is uh, formerly uh, Industrial Light and Magic. It was a special effects shop. I've heard of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I, I acquired Kerner Optical about uh, almost, well, I guess about a year and a half ago, and the company was doing and continues to do miniatures, pyrotechnics, making oh, movies look real. Cool! So you do uh, special effects that are physical special effects. That's right. That's right. So, you know, digital has its place, but I think sometimes when there's a lot of chaos and kinetics and explosions and stuff, if you really want it to look real, you do it real. You can't fake fire. Well, you know, you can for a Harry Potter movie because they expect it to look magical, but if right. you want it to look real, I, yeah. I, I suggest if, make it real. If that pirate ship is going down burning, you better have a pirate ship and you better have flames. Yeah, and, and, and water. And those pirate ships from uh, pirates spent a lot of time at our place. Yeah. <laughs> it, did you build the big, big tank? Were you in the... the there, we had lots of big tanks. It's before my time, but yeah, yeah. They, we, I've seen a lot of the old... It's, uh, it's legendary. It is. Yeah. Incredible yeah. stuff. Is there so, any way to get past the old uh, Japanese monster movie uh, uh, syndrome of boats and monsters in the water and you see the dr the droplets and the and the activity and it looks so much like it's little well it, you know that's the issue with uh, with scale and miniatures is yeah. that uh, the laws of physics can't really be defied and so we often refer to some of our miniatures as bigatures because they're not they're <laughs> they not small. small i mean they're not that small the, well, that's the, the black the, pearl and, and yeah. these things were massive massive they built miniatures. giant tanks and Real. giant ships yeah. they weren't fully life-size so, so watch those again and you won't i mean you, you won't see you won't see they were miniatures yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah you also have to use special cameras and motion uh, capture cameras and things yeah and, and that's that's kind of where a lot of that's where kerner gets real interesting is that there's been a long history of of uh, developing optical technology motion control stuff i mean our buildings where we are have just given birth to, uh, well, Pixar, THX, Photoshop. I mean, it's been a neat geographic center of creation. And uh, about a year and a half ago, we created a new company called Kerner 3D Technologies specifically to make uh, uh, 3D capture systems for cinema and broadcast. Oh, that's neat. And, it, and it's, it's neat because in it, it's, it's a startup, but it also is born out of 30 years of optical engineering right. and, and uh, people at the cutting edge. Wow. Are you in Emeryville? Where are you located? We're in San Rafael. San Rafael. In the original... The uh, old uh, Lucasfilm. The original Lucasfilm or ILM. Matter of fact, if you go to ILM today and go for a tour, Obviously, you see a ton of the models around the place that were built at our place. But better than that, the original Kerner optical door hangs on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> how did you? How did you personally get started in this? Were you a model builder? Not at all. I, I really, I'm an entrepreneur. I started yeah. my first real business in the UK in the '90s, and I ran it for. I started in my living room, like so many others, and you know, sold it nine years later, and sort of semi-retired and became a business consultant. And, one day, a friend of mine who was making a 3D movie with Kerner, he, he walked in and he said, uh, he called me up and he goes, do you want to come and visit the old ILM studios? Well, there's only one answer to that question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I went for a tour and I, uh, I fell in love with the place. But what I found was is that since they'd separated from Lucasfilm, they'd really, well, frankly, they'd kind of, uh, they'd been run by creative and technical people who there's weren't really entrepreneurs. Problem. And yeah, so yeah, three yeah, years yeah. in, they'd lost three million bucks. They were yeah. bleeding. and. Yeah, I came in and decided maybe I could do something about it. We'll see. Well, good for you. I'm glad. It must be kind of fun. I mean, it is. It is, and you know, they they really anticipated the 3D thing well in terms of getting involved in that. I mean, 
our original uh, Kerner cam system was used on for pickup shots on Journey to the Center of the Earth, which was obviously early in this whole Long 3D time. thing. And yeah. we did but it was made in 3D. It was made from start was to finish. Was that the first yeah. in modern this 3D? this era, yeah, yeah, it really, yeah, it really was. And, and um, we, we certainly didn't do principal photography on it. We just did some pickup shots with our original prototype. And we did some 3D elements work on Avatar. So we were kind of ahead of the curve on some of that stuff. And... And we've just, uh, this last quarter, we've been working on Pirates 4 and Transformers 3 and doing effects work for them in 3D as well, using our Kerner cam systems. So d tell me about the system. Is it a digital camera? Well, it's a, it's a camera system or a rig, which means it's camera agnostic. Oh, I see. You can stick uh, any camera you can put a film camera in there. In there. You two, can put film. You'd have to put two in. Two <clears throat> film cameras or, yeah. or, or any of the commonly used, uh, uh, um, either broadcast or cinema. And do they use prisms, mirrors? How do they? They use a beam splitter. It's a piece of glass. Splitter. I don't know okay. how well familiar you are, but it's a piece of glass, 50-50 reflective at an exactly 45-degree angle. One one camera's looking down at the uh, at the reflection, and the other camera's looking through it. Oh, interesting. So they're yes. not side-by-side. Side. No, one's no. One's looking here, and one's, one's on looking top. here. You can yeah. use side-by-side -side rigs for certain shots, but it, certainly if you want to get close in on it's too wide. It's too well, big. You, you take those big lenses, put them yeah. side by side. Yeah. Your eyes are closer together than that. Right. Yeah. So right. that the, the beam splitter allows the lenses to occupy the same space. Uh, how do you adjust the geometry of what the cameras are, are are getting to see? How do you adjust each each is? That's what makes the rig so, you know. That's what makes a, a, a capture system so important. Is that you're, you're controlling the the interocular distance? You're controlling convergence. All of those things have to be controlled, but they also be controlled simultaneously mm -hmm. you, 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 your eyes move exactly at the same so therefore the cameras have to as well right and that's that's where the engineering is really really uh, tricky you see a lot of uh, low-end camera systems come out and oh yeah it, we, we can come and shoot some 3d and you know maybe for small screen TV that's gonna work but you want to shoot for cinema or for high quality sports and television you really have to have high quality capture yeah. or else you spend a ton of time in post which with live TV not so much opportunity not so good. For that. Yeah. Yeah. you don't want to really do that no with a with a camera rig like this where you have one lens shooting forward and one shooting down you can have them exactly coincident in which case you have a 2d image yeah or you can move them move one relative to the other so that they're exactly this far I, apart that's what you need is eye distance which is exactly what you need yeah. and and then you can also uh, as you talk about convergence which is at what point are they focused mm -hmm. is, is the, are the axes crossing and that could, that needs to change also it's, it's an interesting thing for me because I'm very new to the industry and in a sense from an entrepreneurial perspective that's best. I don't know how to do everything therefore I trust people to get it mm. done. But the, you know, my dad when I was a kid explained to me, he was into physics and stuff and explained to me how polarization worked with light and so on and I was always fascinated but when, I really, when he really blew me away is he took two photographs with a still camera and, and then went and got them developed, put them side by side and and then showed me how if I crossed my eyes, I could create this stereoscopic <laughs> image. Auto stereoscope. Man, yeah. it blew me away. And so, you know, 30 years later to be now yeah, you're doing the cutting it. edge of it, it's pretty fun. Yeah. Well, Kerner is legendary. I mean, uh, Star Wars, Star Trek, Boonies, Jurassic Park, uh, Pirates, Pirates Transformers, 1, 2, 3, Terminator. and now 4. Terminator. And don't forget Howard the Duck. <laughs> I, I was trying to forget Howard the Duck. <laughs> hey, everybody's got one, right? Right. <laughs> Well, it's really exciting, uh, and I must, it must be the most fun job to go into. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a real privilege, um, both because of the legacy and, yeah. and because of the present. We still do really incredible and fun stuff. Um, sure. The, the, the work we've just recently been doing on these movies now has been so fascinating to watch it take place. Of course, um, for us, it's a bit like it, it's quite a long process. For the director, it's a short thing. They walk in, we shoot whatever it is that we built, but for us, we build it for six weeks in advance. Right. And so we see the, the ship or the plane or the city or whatever it is taking shape, and then on, on, on shooting day, we see it wow. not take shape, because most of our shots are big one-shot wonders. We're blowing them up, crashing them, disposing of them. <laughs> and, and where this comes back to 3D, I think, and, and I think this is an important comment on 3D, is that if we keep pumping out low quality or bad quality 3D stuff, then, we, then we're definitely going to impact consumer confidence. Right. Yes. Yeah. So one of our comments is that, look, if you're going to force the conversion of your movie, go ahead and do that. It makes sense in some cases. But when you're dealing with explosions and heavy kinetics and what have you, you're better off to shoot it and, and get it captured in 3D the first time around. And we've had some real experience with that this last month. Kirk just it, pulled it, up the Kerner Cam 3D rig. And it, it wasn't Boy, until I understood the, this, this uh, picture of it. So there is no lens in front of the, uh, the, the prism. The prism is the front of the thing. Correct. Okay, now it told, so th that means the lenses in the cameras have to be perfectly synchronized. Adjusted. Perfectly synchronized. Perfect. Here's what's kind of fascinating is that there are kind of two mentalities around how to capture 3D. There's capture and correct. Yeah. You know, look, shoot what we can get and we'll go into post and fix it later, which is like a blank check. You don't know what that's going to cost. Or right. capture it as perfectly as you can and reduce that amount. Now, 
uh, everybody kind of, I guess, tends to make that claim. The difference for us is that our guys, I mean, one of our chief engineers designed the bow cam, uh, the, the mini cam from Empire Strikes, like just following Empire Strikes Back. He's been at this game a long, long time. Our team comes out of the physical heart of ILM, so they tend to think like, what do we need to do to get this shot so perfect that the digital geeks don't have to mess with it? <laughs> yeah. I'm right. kidding a little here, yeah. but yeah. that yeah. was the view they took with 3D as well, is we want to capture this so cleanly that it, it isn't going to require a great deal of time in post. And hence, our cameras work very well in, in live and look live environments because they can. Wow, wow. Well, I'm so glad you came by. I think you're going to have a fun time at uh, NAB. Obviously, I so. I'm looking at this uh, the press release. There's going to be a lot of interest. You already just sold two rigs to Panavision, I see, so that's great. You know, yeah. my girlfriend asked me as we came in, she goes, is this one of these geek conferences? <laughs> <laughs> she goes, is this a geek conference like CES? And I go, no, no, CES is the consumer geeks. These are the geeks behind the geeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The geeks who make these the geeks the look good. Uber <laughs> geeks. Eric, no, so nice to meet you. Cheers, thanks, thanks for, for having by. me. And, and, and good luck and congratulations. Thank it's you. really, really exciting. See, now maybe you're winning me over with this. <laughs> By the end of this show, <laughs> I think Scott I will. Scott knows I'm a, th I'm a 3D doubter. And he's a skeptic. Well, you got to look at what, I mean, Lucasfilm has been I, not so much a doubter, but I think somewhat of a skeptic. And then, of course, earlier this year, they announced the conversion of the Star Wars movies, which is big. Yeah. Which we're going to have. You could be cynical about that, though. You could say it's about capital. Right. But George, at what conference was he I trust at? George, you know. I really do. He just last week said that he, and I, I don't have the exact quote here, but it, he said uh, basically that he feels that 3D will take over the way color did wow so and, and, and he's he's not one of the early guys that jumped in on this he's now saying that after a couple years of observation and uh, so I'm, i'll believe I, I it when they convert that. the star wars christmas special to three. <laughs> yeah, I'll know. one of the guests we have here uh tomorrow or wednesday is uh, the ceo of prime prime focus, prime focus right who's doing who's the 3d doing conversion yeah. for star wars we had a 3d panel at our studio a couple of months back and we had john Knoll and art rapola and all these guys talking about uh, bob nicolard and, or john nicolard and bob whitehill it was mm -hmm. a real nice group of 3d guys and of course this whole thing comes up is that it's uh the early adopters jumped in they said this is definitely going to happen and there were all the the kind of naysayers in the back and the naysayers are slowly getting one over <laughs> as long as we don't keep bumping out quickly and badly converted movies exactly <laughs> Clash of the Titans comes to mind. I, I wouldn't have named anything. <laughs> <laughs> I would. <laughs> well, I'm ex all right. I'm excited now. I want to see. Actually, I want to go over and visit Kerner. It sounds like there'd be some really cool <clears throat> things blowing Well, up. when you have a moment, go to the website and look at the VEX on, on, on Kerner.com. Yeah. Go to the uh, actually Kerner.co, actually, and you'll see the VES breakdown reel for, ter for Transformers, uh, sorry, Terminator Salvation. A ton of pyrotechnics blowing up post-apocalyptic wow. San Francisco. Do they do that uh, on your slot? Yeah, sometimes in the stage. So that <laughs> on that video, you'll see an A-10 Warthog getting disintegrated from tail to nose. It's incredible. So sometimes it gets noisy at work. It gets, yeah, well, you get these uh, <laughs> bang on the slab, everybody be ready. We have to warn the neighbors. <laughs> we really do. <laughs> uh, we're going to be blowing things up uh, tonight, uh, just so you know. Bang on the slab, is that what they call yeah, it? Yeah, there's a big outdoor area called the slab, Bang and a lot of the, the outdoor uh, pyro takes place there. <laughs> wow. We need more explosions on Twit. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, well you guys are welcome about. to come by. We'll set one up for Thanks, you anytime. <laughs> you know, maybe we will. I'd love to see it. Next no time problem. you got a big uh, thing going, if we can come down with our cameras and watch. The that'd only be thing, kind of fun. yeah, you, I know the movie studios, studios they don't that. like. But you know that, what? Yeah. If if they know it's not going to go anywhere till after the release, we can we can see about okay. getting permission. Okay, we could do a secret uh, secret filming. There you go. Yeah. Thanks very Thanks, much, Eric. guys. Nice to meet you. Really great to Cheers. meet you. You're watching our live coverage, brand new, just began. From the NAB show in Las Vegas, Nevada, the National Association of Broadcasters has its big yearly convention. They have a lot of small conventions. There's radio shows, there's East Coast shows, but this is the, right. this this is is the big, big one. one. No, I'm gonna, we don't have to do a two-shot necessarily. I, I, is Alex leaving or is he going to stick around? Oh, okay. Well, we should do a two-shot then. So what is that? Oh, okay. is that a hard drive? Yeah, so there's, I, I brought three little capture devices. and what These are audio only. These are, and we're repeating a little bit because we, we talked about Well, don't repeat. Earlier. That's all right. I, but, but the, um, I'll watch the show. No, but, I'll, but I'll, I'll talk about it just for a second. SDI, HDMI in. Right. Limited. So you got those super sound device limiters built right, in. Right, right. Those are good. Um, it records to uh, both compact flash up here as well as uh, SSD. So you can oh, that's an SSD. SSD. That you can just, and then look, the SSD even has, it, you even have your USB oh, so and cool. FireWire built in. Uh, how much is that? Um, this is twenty five ninety five. Well, that's not so is, bad. Well, when you look at it, I mean, you know, that's. This but is, it's only for audio. No, this is video. Oh, that does video this too. Is an, this is SDI in. Oh. Uh, yeah. Twenty five ninety five. It's SDI in, HDMI in, HDMI out, and SDI out. So you can have 
SDI going in, you can merge the audio into it, and then you can go HDMI out, or the other way, you know, or the other way around. It is, uh, a, a, um, and and you can actually watch what you're doing. Oh, you figured out the guest mic thing. By the way, I meant to tell you that. Always have the guest mics pointed towards the host because then people will talk into them, <laughs> pointed away from the host. The uh, this is a, a less expensive one, so this is the Atomus Ninja, and uh, and this is 9.95. Oh, that's not bad. HDMI. These are again are. are SSD. Oh wow! So, so I could plug. Now would I get uh, four 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 if I plug an HDMI yeah, out? This is four two two. Four two two. Uncompressed. I mean, so you're, you're recording actually. You're, it's four two two. Uncompressed coming in, but you're recording in all of these. You're recording. Four two two. Uh, typically Apple ProRes. Oh. So you're, you get That's an Apple cool. ProRes high quality uh, piece. Now here's the, and this is the, uh, AJA Key Pro. This is the little one. Right. Now I've got big. We have a Key Pro. Yeah, You've we got, got one, one of those. This yeah. is the little one. This would go. Oh, this is the new. Flash. This is the one you said. Wait till uh, before you buy anything. Wait till. Uh, yeah, you just want to see all these. NAB. You know, I, I was so, like, you want to, this is the, this how is much coming. is that one? This one is uh, uh, 1995. So this is two thousand dollars. So you got, um, uh, you got. That's about what we paid for our Key Pro, right? You paid four thousand dollars. Oh, we did. Did we? Uh -huh. So this is one thousand, two thousand, twenty-five. Now, th there's another version of this. This HDMI only. That's fifteen ninety-five. Mm. This one's tw this mm. one's got also has sync and. So we would <coughs> we'd use these right for instance in the field like right now to record the any the one broadcast. of these. This would be the stuff instead of doing anything internally. Right. You just, you just right now in, in the studio, just so you know, we record to it. We have a Mac Pro running Final right. Cut, and that's what we record our shows to. Okay. So this would replace that. Check this out. So Ooh. this. This is, is a, is you connect this to a uh, HDMI in, so you put HDMI in, yes. connect it to a Wi-Fi, it's a Wi-Fi, and it'll transmit HD wirelessly up to 150 feet. Wow. Now, if you have a, if you have a, um, a hotspot mm -hmm. with your Verizon phone, yeah. uh, with 4G, yeah. you could theoretically connect this to a camera to your phone and stream it to the internet. We're going to be testing this later this week. This could be like a like what the live you does. Wow. So we're going to. Uh, well, you know, I brought uh, on your recommendation. I brought the Owly. How did that work? Did you <coughs> like I have it? a couple of uh, uh, segments that I shot without the Owly because <laughs> I didn't have it with me uh, earlier because I saw I saw the um, Tiffin booth, mm -hmm. those steady cams. And uh, I didn't, did Tiffin buy steady cams? Yeah. Is that what happened? So um, we have the. Uh, do you have those clips? We have a pilot. Those clips that I shot out in the field there. You didn't transfer them over yet? All right. Well, we'll sh I, I won't tell you yet what I saw. But it was really funny. And it was very cool. And I have a video of it. Uh, yes. So we want to make sure we think. We did not do it. Do what? Do so something. We, we want to thank Netflix. Netflix. We actually have to do we, an ad. We would like to thank Netflix because everybody here watching probably already has it. But we'd like to uh, thank Netflix for supporting us because <laughs> uh, because we all know what Netflix is, of course. It's the thing that you, there's, you know watch. What? There's a guy I'm, I, I think right now I'm watching. I think there's one. Right, you? You don't have it yet. Who, who doesn't? And oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? I, you know that what's guy, really cool? guy over there. But I bet your mom doesn't have it. My parents have it. My, my parents mom, have it. My parents I have it. I give my mom Netflix every year as a Christmas, as her birthday gift. Oh. And that's so awesome. So, so look at this. This is my iPhone. I'm running the Netflix app. So, the, you know, when you first uh, start Netflix, uh, you, you start making this big old queue, right, of, of movies and stuff that you want to watch. And it's DVD by mail. In most cases, it's in a single uh, business day. Now, that's pretty cool. But now this new Netflix streaming on your iPhone or your iPad, so awesome. on your laptop, on your Roku box, on your PS3, on your Xbox 360, your Wii, I'm actually now bringing our network to its knees. <laughs> Close the I, it is it is an amazing thing with my when I'm at home, and I'm just simply able to log what in. What would you like to watch? Best in Show. Yeah, sure. That was good. That was great. Casino. Remember that? That was a great movie. Warren Beatty and that. I Beatty. find myself using it all the time. I mean, I have I have a I have Apple TV, um, uh, Apple TV two at in my house and Apple TV in has the back it. Yeah, the new one. The yeah, front, in the front office and then my iPads, iPhones, whatever. We just turn it on. We want to watch a movie. It's Fantastic! It's yeah. uh, look at that. It's okay. all about the instant play. So I now we're now we're watching a movie. You had some discussion about when the last time you had a uh, you, you got a disc. It was on one of the twits. Yeah, you guys were talking about it, and well, I looked back on mine, and it was my disc was covered with dust. <laughs> mine was like April 9th, two thousand like eight. It now was now like admittedly not ago. everything is on uh, instant play. So uh, if you if there's plenty of times you want a disc. In fact, for instance, I was just watching the Smothers Brothers 
Uh, I just read, the, you know, Andy Anako started this whole thing on, uh, on Mac Break Weekly. He recommended a book about the Smothers Brothers called Dangerously Funny, and then I wanted to see the old episodes, and they're on disc on Netflix. Yeah. Season two and three, Tommy Smothers worked with Time Life, and they put him on there. But now here's Best in Show. So now we're actually watching this movie streaming live over the Internet. Now here's the good part about this. You could do this free for the next 30 days if you go to Netflix dot com slash twitch you get the discs you get the streaming movies it's amazing and never again will you be bored in the airport bored waiting for a bus waiting for anything uh, you can always be entertained and amused lots of great movies on here have you seen best of show i have seen best of oh, show isn't best it of funny show is fantastic i love all of those mockumentary yeah. movies i and that's the other thing about waiting for guffman best Wait, of yeah. show uh, uh for your consideration for your consideration um, and the thing that, that's cool about um, streaming is you can get on a binge oh, yeah. and like say, oh, I want to see all the Michael, uh, what's his name? Um, Keaton, I want to say, I can't remember the director's name, but I want to see all of those movies. Yeah. And then you just watch them one after the other. Or it's you, like get, you get caught up. Like I, I, uh, I, I just, I don't have Showtime, so I didn't see Dexter. And then suddenly I right. like, I'm going to watch, watch all the Dexters. I watched all the Dexters. I'm in the middle of season two. <laughs> you know, I've got, I've got Colloquy running on my iPhone and the chat room says, stop showing the movie before they sue you. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> fair use. Fair use. I call fair use. I call fair use. It is very simple. Just go to Netflix.com slash Twit to sign up today. And I'm telling you, it's a great gift. They do have gift plans. And I give my mom a year's subscription. To I didn't realize Every, they had a gift plan. Yeah, for January 2nd. And she gets it. It's actually, if you forget, okay, here's a good thing. If you forget a gift and it's, you know, like birthday today, it's an email. <laughs> it's a beautiful on. email and it says, Le, you know, Leo just gave you a year of Netflix. Here's your coupon. And she's got it like that. And if it's streaming, she's watching it five seconds later. Right. <clears throat> I just got my mom an iPod, iPod Touch. Perfect. And uh, so she should be well, when I bought When I got started getting Netflix for my mom, I bought her a DVD player, a TV set, and uh, all together, and a Netflix subscription. Uh, now, yes, she has an iPad. She, that's it. She's right. done. Nah, it's gotten a lot simpler. Please try it. Netflix.com slash Twit. We do uh, love them, and we thank them. I've been trying to get them as a sponsor on this network uh, for years. Before everybody fan. has it. Before, we're such you know, because that's the... You know, we're everybody will have yeah. it someday. So uh, James Cameron gave the keynote uh, at this event. We're at the NAB show, the National Association of Broadcasters show in Las Vegas, Nevada. We'll be here through Thursday broadcasting live. I've been watching you. You've been doing some great stuff. We were out in the field during Home Theater Geeks. Uh, and James Cameron uh, this morning was speaking. We were not able to bring you the... Uh, the uh, keynote live, and thank goodness. Oh, really? Well, Hilton was there. Our camera operator was there, and uh, a great guy. And he said, well, all they did was talk about their new business deal with Pace the whole time. It's like uh, some business thing. Yeah. And why do we come here? We don't come here to find out about business. We kind of come here to find out how well, James Cameron wants to change Hollywood. So he did have a press conference after the keynote. And that was the one that was actually worth And, well, the, you know, there was still a lot of waste business. of time. But we, we are going to jump ahead, right? Hilton's found us the good spot. <laughs> so uh, he is talking a little bit here with his, with his new partner. Is it James Pace Hilton? Is that his name? Fitz. Fitz Pace. Fizz. <laughs> Viz. <laughs> Vase. Fizz Face. Did you say Fizz Face? <laughs> Okay. Notice how I just stay silent. Now, that I'm is a crazy. big story. Apparently, James Cameron is partnering with somebody named Fizzface. <laughs> Let's go to the tape. <laughs> well, I could I could do an hour presentation, and I did recently at uh, at CinemaCon on, on uh, high frame rates versus, uh, in other words, temporal resolution versus spatial resolution. There's a big push for 4K. Uh, I'm somewhat cautionary about that uh, because even in, even at the cinema level, even though the cameras are enabled to shoot some of them 3K, 4K, 5K, even in terms of the the the, uh, the red epics, uh, and we can display 4K. Uh, the, the the truth is that the center of that pipeline is still 2K, and there's, so there's a bottleneck, and that's in visual effects. Visual effects renders right now are not. Uh, visual effects companies cannot operate cost effectively above 2K for their for their native uh, rendering process. So we can all charge to, to, to 4K, but it'll only be the, the stuff that's mostly live action, which is not most most movies these days. Uh, it will apply more on the on the broadcast side. Now, the reason I'm cautionary is because if we have bandwidth 
uh, available, if we have uh, bitrate headroom available, we should use it for temporal resolution meaning higher frame rates. And, and that, that's not such a big is, issue in the broadcast industry because it, it's already 60i uh, uh, enabled right now and, and moving to 60p presumably in the next year or so, at least some of the networks are talking about making that their, their uh, goal, such as ESPN and so on. So I don't think that the higher frame, higher frame rate is, is as big an issue for, for broadcast. I think it's a big issue on the movie side because I think I think the broadcast industry is pulling away from the movies rapidly in this area of frame rate. They've, I believe broadcast has made the right decision. The movie industry is going in the wrong direction, which is getting too overly focused on sp spatial resolution. You know, what's the, what's the area array? If you've got a 4K picture, you're talking about four times the data rate of a 2K picture because it's, it's essentially four 2K pictures, um, as opposed to doing 2K at 48 or 60P, uh, in which case you're, you're uh, only at two or two and a half times uh, the bit rate to achieve a better looking picture because you've removed all the motion artifacts. But that's a, that's a, a fairly technical area I'm, I'm pretty outspoken on. The other thing is that most people don't understand is that a lot of the 4K, so-called 4K projectors, because they're 3D compatible, are using an optical system that's built into the projector and they're simultaneously displaying two 2K pictures in a stack so that they're displaying simultaneously on the screen as opposed to the time sequential process. And by doing that, they've essentially gone from 4K down to a quarter of that resolution of, of 2K. And it is also the case for the non-3D films because they have to run them through the same, the same projector. Uh, in terms of a set setup, I think, I think the, the general answer is we're gonna be there to, to service the needs of, of, of whatever people adopt in this. We can handle the frame rates we can handle the, the, the resolution issues. And we welcome any improvements in any of those areas that are, that are industry-wide and we're ready to, ready to service them. Well, we're almost on the side of the, uh, of the customer, if you will, because you know, one of the unique factors of the company is we, we try and look at it as a complete end-to-end -end solution. We don't just take one you know, um, you know, kind of spike in the marketplace and say, oh, that's going to change everything that's what we're doing. I, I think we're embracing, you know, higher resolution and where it takes advantage for 3D. Um, but we're also looking at it from the end to end. How does it impact the whole infrastructure? And I think one of our strengths to make these alliances is to try and push the industry towards a goal that it works for everybody. You know, not just one piece of the puzzle. You know, and so I think it's it's critical to embrace those technologies, but also to evaluate them in the overall goal of where we want to end up, and that is, you know, good 3D entertainment that is cost effectively produced worldwide. When you, hi, during your keynote conversation, during your keynote conversation or for your business, when you use the word broadcast, do you mean? the terrestrial over the air industry, or do you incorporate broadcast, satellite, and cable? Yes, okay. yeah, it's not just terrestrial. Okay, so in terms of the broadcaster who has, uh, you know, has spectrum that's been given to him by the government that they've now given up their other spectrum, how do broadcasters use their spectrum to transmit 3D under their current uh, limitations of what else they have to use it for? One of the earliest adopters was uh, B-Sky, who are, who, you know, who are uh, satellite primarily. Uh, and you know, the, the truth is that right now the, uh, the, the, um, the early standard for 3D is basically that if you can, if you can manage a, uh, an HD signal, anybody who can move an HD signal can move a 3D signal because the HD frame is subdivided into two essentially half HD pictures that are then recombined. They don't get recombined until inside your brain, actually, interestingly enough. They, they, display, they display on the screen time sequentially. They're transmitted to the set uh, uh, simultaneously. They're split apart, displayed time sequentially, and, and uh, decoded into, the, into your, and, and you put the pictures back together in your, in your head. So you're looking at an HD picture in 3D, but it's not full HD on the left eye and the right eye. That would be the, the next stage, and that would require a doubling of the, of the bandwidth. But it's not necessary right now. You only need full HD for each eye for uh, uh, you know, uh, cinema-sized displays. You don't, need them, you don't need it for home displays. That's, that's my opinion anyway. And I, I think you'll see technologies that extract it from a, you know, a panel display and back into a 2D. So I, I think there's a lot of room to discuss 
you know, the distribution of them all. I think our focus is, is to ramp up a, more of the content foundation so that we're, we're talking about more volume, you know, coming down the pipeline. Because right now, I, I think that's a little bit of the bottleneck is, you know, some of the, you know, 2D productions out there um, exhibiting their product in 3D in a cost-effective manner. I think that's probably our first, you know, hurdle or threshold to concentrate on. Right. If I mean, if you saw the the, the keynote, there's no point uh, beating the horse any any longer. But the, but the concept that what we really need to be doing uh, right now to grow the the, the market to the home uh, is enable uh, producers and and networks to be able to do what they do, but do it in 3D, um, so that so that we can uh, we can close this content gap that's created by the sets being available, but the but the uh, uh, broadcasters and networks lagging behind. Is the 2D to 3D conversion going to stay? I think, uh, well, 2D to 3D conversion is controversial on the, on the film side. All right, we're back. We didn't mean to cut it right there, but <laughs> my hand signals weren't perfect. So uh, it's Vince Pace. Let me get it right. And can you put on Hilton's uh, microphone? Uh, when you get a chance, um, a switcher disappeared and he's back though, so we uh, we can bring you in. So Hilton Goring was uh, there. In fact, thank you for uh, covering the uh, both both the long interminable keynote yes. and the press conference, and he can explain a little bit what's going on. It's it, Vince and uh, James Cameron, the noted director, director yeah. of uh, Avatar and Titanic and, ti and Terminator uh, and Aliens, um, have formed a company. Yeah. And the, and the goal is that, uh, what I gathered, but maybe you can clarify, is that um, when you're shooting a movie or in a, if you're a broadcaster in the field, you're shooting all of the above, 3D, 2K, 4K, everything. Yeah, yeah. it seems as though their main goal was to help productions to get rid of their worry of 3D. Right. You know, to show that it's effortless. Did you get the sense that James Cameron really was a believer in 3D? Really was, sorry? A believer. Oh, you put on the headphones. You'll oh. be able to hear me better. But it was a real believer. They're not They're not on? All right. Can we get some uh, uh, level for uh, Mr. Uh, Goring here? This, there's a knob in front of you. Can you hear me? Can you hear um, me? Check, check. Um, I'm just wondering if you if you got the sense that, sorry, that's all right. that he was a believer in 3D. Oh, yes, he definitely is a believer in 3D. And I think that the main premise of what he was talking about was about how he can get rid of people's worries of 3D, about having to have two separate crews, for instance. Right. One example they gave was uh, if the 2D unit is shooting with a 250 millimeter lens, they can come and piggyback right on top of so they the get it all and get it all and actually go wider so maybe go a hundred just to show the depth of 3d because it right. needs a wider frame right so it was it was informative to the point of where i think his the main premise of the company is to get rid of worries right because a lot of this a lot of the sort of hearsay of 3d there's it's a big headache and there's yeah, it's too much too work. many too yeah. many things going on and They've shown how they've made things compact and able to translate to all different kind of cameras. I, th I also read something else into uh, one of his answers in the press conference, which is we're going to give people 3D, but also if the demand is there, higher frame rates, more resolution. Well, because resolution, you know, is is something that is a uh, resolution can be measured in many different ways. You have color. We were talking earlier with uh, Darren Okada from ASC, uh, talking about color depth. You know, how how deep is that? How deep is the color? And then how big is the frame? Which we're talking about 4K right. or 5K. And then there's and then how many frames we can throw in. And, uh, when you do more, everything's going to look a lot smoother. Right. Right. That's to me. I would like to see that. 
as much as or more than see 3D. You know, I know you, you you really notice it when you start paying attention to the 24 frames. Uh, you know, but there's this is a real religious discussion. You talk to Roger yeah. Ebert, and he's you know the, the idea is, is he likes the filmic 24. Look. That's yeah. a certain look, and that's a certain. And people will argue that your brain is doing a certain yeah, thing. And it, it makes it a film for your brain rather than reality. Right. When you start getting to 60 frames a second or 120 frames a second, now you're looking at it. Just looks like it's real. Right. And and yeah. and some people argue that that takes you that then requires everything on the screen to be more realistic right because because your 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 mind is no longer get it's just saying that should be a window it's and not maybe filling that, in the blanks and maybe that's the but that's also a direction that is right. a fully 3d environment that is 120 frames a second or 60 frames a second or what or or whatever yeah. now it'll look like you're looking into a window and maybe that's a right. that's an experience yeah they were saying that's they did mention that about you know someone asked the question what's the next level you know, and they're saying other than seats vibrating, etc. <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing really you can go. And then smell of vision has been tested. And they're doing it in Korea. They're, yeah. they're, they're tell better stories. It sounds like yeah. that's that's really the, the tell way a to true go. story. Yeah. Although here we are at a convention that isn't really about telling stories. It's about supporting storytellers. But it's about the technology, yeah. the things that help storytellers yeah. tell their story. And I have to say, having just wandered the floor a little bit with Scott Wilkinson. There are 4K displays in every, uh, you know, Panasonic, Sony, and JVC right. all have 4K displays. Um, your uh, Sony was showing off OLED displays, which were incredibly crisp mm -hmm. and uh, realistic. Yeah. So there is definitely, I think what what, what you see in companies like uh, the, 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 the display manufacturers is the same thing that Cameron and Pace were talking about. We're not sure exactly what the next thing is, but we want to be ready and we want to have it, and uh, and then we'll see where the market drives us. I have to wonder if the market really is driving it towards 3D. I, I, I'm, it's amazing how James Cameron, how yeah. how much of a 3D advocate he is. I mean, this really sounds like well, he really is. Is I think the hard yeah. part is, is is seeing whether it's uh, uh, the hard part when you see good 3D, the way it's meant to be done, mm -hmm. it's very compelling. Uh, you know, I was um, I was down at, at Sony, you know. Uh, uh, Buzz Hayes had, had me down for the the 3D research group, and there's like three days of how to shoot. 3D. Right. And um, and it was when you when you're sitting on set, playing around with your interaxial and playing around with convergence and everything else, and you're looking at these images, it, it just looks like you can go out and touch them. It look it doesn't right. doesn't look like that often in the movie theater. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so so the issue is that one of the big challenges that I think they are addressing. Yeah. Is there's a lot of people doing bad 3D, and that will kill the industry. You know things I that see, are, yeah. you know, because when you see good 3D, it is wow. I mean, that is that's like I, I really, you know, and good 3D that doesn't hurt your eyes. Right. You know, like that has an interaxial distance that's 0.5 or one inch, right. and not not two and a half inches, and not, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do very quickly that hurt your hurt you, <laughs> hurt the audience mm -hmm. uh, if you're not, you know, um, and when when the, we learn not to do that, and one of the things James Cameron w did really really well is uh, being conservative. Putting the subject matter on the on the screen, not in front of the screen, right. um, not having a huge interaxial distance, not having you know, there's a lot of technical stuff he did. And the breaking of the frame and all those different things that are important. Yeah. So, so he really paid, you know. So I think he's he definitely is bringing ten years of research to this to, to yeah. what he's talking about. Saying, look, we've been thinking about this for a long time. You guys keep on screwing it up. We're going to come <laughs> in. I, I think that you know we're going to come in. And if, if, you want us to, if you want to do it right, have us come in. And we'll make sure. Comes out. Somebody in the chat room just said something kind of interesting, and it, it, to the point, which was that 24 frames a second. Vision Quest mentioned this uh, is in a way a video compression, or it's a film compression standard. It, it was chosen as the slowest frame rate you could use. That didn't bother. People. That didn't bother people. It was all uh, about. It was, yeah, it was all it's about, about saving film. celluloid, yeah, and uh, we've grown used to it, and we consider it an artistic standard. But after all, really, it's just a compression technology. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, um, and uh, uh, you know, our subsequent generations may grow used to 3D or may grow used to 4K or wh whatever it is. But they'll certainly have the option to do that. This is, a, this is a 3D show. There's no question about it. A lot of 3D. A lot of far more 3D than I could be comfortable with. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's you know, there, um, you're seeing this revolution in, in, in a lot of these technologies that, that were kind of slowly coming forward. Yeah. And now they're coming forward really fast. Yeah. I mean, that, the things like these solid state recorders, one of the things that's driving them is actually the, the earthquake. Because oh, interesting. The, tape, the tape factories were submerged in radioactive water. Oh, interesting. So, there, so the, the issue mm. is you can't buy, SR tapes went from $100 to almost $1,000 overnight. 
And um, and so what's happened? Companies have said in the next three years we're going to get rid of our tapes, uh, our tape usage. It's now next three months. They've really got rid of it. Yeah. And so yeah. It, it accelerated it basically by tenfold. Yeah. You know, because because you can't buy it. You know. Right. So the, so the thing is, is that the um, so these uh, you know these technologies are accelerating the cost of doing production is just right dropping through the floor. So I told you I was over at the Tiffin uh, booth. Oh. <laughs> They make steady cams. Yeah. Uh, they have a beautiful little steady cam rig that I would love to get for uh, camcorders. It's just fantastic. Yeah. You've recommended that on a Mac break. We weekly. have the Merlin. Well, we have a Merlin, which is a, a little Merlin. Merlin. Yeah, so we have a Merlin. Isn't it cute? Yeah. It's cute? yeah, cute. And then You're we have a pilot. The, and the, the best. I the best. think we have some video. This now this is shaky cam video. I'll show you. So we weren't using the steady cam. Of course, there's steady cams here. But look at this. It's a steady oh, that's, seg. That's the, oh, yeah. way, a segue with a camera mount on it. For really smooth shots, but where does the driver go on this? Oh, look at that! He rides around. He can go it's anywhere. There's actually a Pixel Core member in, uh, in uh, Berkeley that has one. He built from scratch. This guy built it as well, but I think Tiffin uh, wants to sell it. I think it's fantastic. It's a it's a Segway, Dolly. Yeah. And I asked him. I said, "Well, don't doesn't the camera going up and down, flip flopping around?" He said, "No, no, it's very smooth." No. <laughs> but it's balanced. That's the whole. It's whole, balanced to know, do that. And they've Those taken arms. out half of the Segway in right. order to control it. You control knees and hips. Yeah, yeah. it's fantastic. <laughs> so that was the uh, that was shot with the uh, that's, that's without the alley though. Without so the alley, I'm, I have to get the alley and uh, go back out in the field. I'm going to do that in a few minutes. Uh, we're going to go back to the studio in a few minutes because Tom Merritt is there for uh, TNT is coming up. Our whole slate of regular shows forecast is uh, coming up uh, as well. Uh, and we're going to be back here 9 a.m. tomorrow? Okay. We won't stream the, the photo uh, walk, but we are doing a photo walk tonight with uh, Lisa Betney, mostlyphotoadventures.com if you want to sign up. 7 p.m. in front of the Bellagio. I've already talked to a bunch of people here who are going, who are planning to go, which is, which is kind of amazing. I guess I should sit this way and I'll block that light. Mm -hmm. that looks so much better. It's all about, it's all about placement. <laughs> earlier, earlier, we were sitting in front of the Grass Valley booth, which is a beautiful booth, but we were cutting off the GR in the shot, and it gave us a kind of, <laughs> wasn't the look I was hoping for. <laughs> uh, and then uh, tomorrow um, uh, uh, at 6, p uh, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to stream a panel that should be very interesting about the future of digital uh, streaming broadcast uh, it's called the uh, Broadcast Minds panel from New Tech, the people who do our uh, TriCaster. They're sponsoring it, and I'll be there with Adam Carolla on the panel, a um, uh, guy from the NBA and from St. John's University. So that should be very, very cool. I don't think we need any more of that James Cameron uh, press conference. I think we saw mm -hmm. the gist of it. Yeah. Yeah, we get the idea. Thank you, Hilton, for shooting that. I You're appreciate welcome. it. Yeah, poor Hilton had to <laughs> put up with How long was the uh, keynote? Uh, the press conference was about half an hour, and the keynote was around 40 minutes. So oh, that's just not too them. bad. And he, then there was some prior to that. Cameron so. has a lot of pulling power, but I was just hoping that he was going to make some announcements about new, new, new technology. No, so technology. no technical yeah. announcements. Yeah. It's a business business announcement. Yeah, business deal. Oh, we are going to stream the Bob Heil uh, microphone party. We use Bob Heil's uh, mics. We love them from heilsound.com. We have for years. Bob uh, gave us a whole bunch of new mics um, for this uh, set. We're all using PR40s up here. And he has a party on Wednesdays, uh, Wednesday evenings. He doesn't do a booth. Bob doesn't do a booth. He does... Uh, he does a uh, oh that's good boy the sound sound quality just improved. It was that mic that I guess that mic that was a noisy mic yeah that's great. Uh, he does a, um, a party instead of a booth and we're going to stream live from the party as well, so that should be fun. Is there a crowd gathering behind me? A flash mob? <laughs> uh, yeah, that sounds better. I think that uh, that yeah we maybe had all the mics open. Or well, something then we'll have like a lot that. to talk about on Wednesday because Apple of course will do its announcement. No, so that and let's mention that uh, the Final Cut u uh, user group meets. Well, usually it's a Final Cut user group, and there's lots of people talking, and uh, so there was a, there was a whole lineup that Kevin Smith was going to be talking. Oh they wow! Were, they're going to have all you know all these all these speakers, and Apple came in and said, you know, we'd like to do an announcement, and we would like to be the only ones doing the announcement. Wow! And so they took over the entire super meet for tomorrow, and now it went from the super meet went from being busy to being sold out. 
Like it is like every person that uses Final Cut wants to Find see, what, see what's gonna, what Apple's going to say here. So That just shows so you the power of Apple that they could say, uh, Kevin Smith, not so much. Let's just, uh, can we have the whole thing. Well, and it's hard to, it's hard to turn down. I mean, this well, is, if this you're is the, the Final Cut super meat, you yeah. want to know what Apple's up to. And, and so Apple's going to do a technology. I mean, well, here's, no one knows exactly what Apple's going to do. The rumor is, is they're going to do a, you know, show, show it off. They're not going to show a finished uh, this is the new final cut which people have really cut. been waiting for yep. yeah and so there so we're um, we're waiting to see what what it does uh, or where where it's going um, and so we're gonna um, we might sneak in there maybe with a you think we could get there? in there yeah don't say it now because we don't want uh, Steve yeah. to be looking for us well Steve's not gonna be there all right so <laughs> the uh, so the um, uh, but but I think that uh, I think it's be really interesting what I'm what I don't think we're going to hear tomorrow is the price point. Which so you won't hear shipping and price. I don't think shipping and price they'll, are going to. I, just, I don't expect that. I mean, okay. If they do it, it'll, it'll floor us. But I think that what we're going to see is technology and, you know, let people know what direction it's going. Uh, well, and we'll have something to report to then. What time is the? Uh, uh, it is. Um, I think it's at like eight o'clock at night. Okay. I mean, it's, it starts the whole so, event starts. So at tune like in Wednesday five. morning, and and uh, will you come back Wednesday morning and tell Absolutely. us what you found yeah. out? No, I'll be here Wednesday morning. About the new final cut. And then we're doing this week of media uh, in Wednesday afternoon, and we'll probably bring on. We'll get really geeky about it. Um, but well, but Wednesday morning we'll bring it. We we should try to get Larry Jordan and some of the other guys up. Here. Get Larry to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was here this morning. Yeah. And he can chat about it. So I uh, I have one more video. I'm I'm gonna go after right after we get off the air. I'm gonna go out and shoot this in the field. And this is not a big deal. I don't even know who this company is. But I just really like this rig. This is a pro 3D rig. They've got two red cameras and a beam splitter. Go ahead and show this. Of course, we're talking a lot about 3Ds, and there are a lot of 3D cameras. This is a fairly common setup. This is a, a, a pair of red cameras, one facing forward, one facing down. They're using a, a beam splitter to get a 3D shot in here. And this would be, of course, for cinema. Pretty amazing. Though. That would what be four K three D. We'd be getting. Only imagine what that or must 5K. cost. It's, that, yeah, it's that's sweet. <laughs> those beam splitters are cool, and, and it's so complex because okay, so when you think about the beam splitter, it's not just putting one up, one, one up and one down, or one in and one up. Right. You now okay. So when I zoom, both both lenses have to zoom the same right. way. If I focus, both perfectly focus, synced. They have to yep. be perfectly sync. Now it also gets into this whole thing with the CMOS sensor. If, it, if they're scanning, you know, from top to bottom. Right. If I take one camera like this and one camera like this, oh, they're sideways. They're now, they're now scanning it yeah. differently, which means if there's any jello, you know, right. from the, uh, you You'll know, get some they're, weird distortion. It's now it's yeah. it's weird in 3D, yeah. you know, and so, <laughs> um, and so there's all these 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 little pieces of those, and the and the and those rigs, the cheapest rigs are three hundred fifty dollars. That rig there is, I mean, if it's fully featured, is probably in the. Uh, Fifty to one hundred thousand dollar range. The one just the rig, not the cameras. No, yeah, you, that's just you the still rig. Still got to add, you know, it doesn't come. Cameras not included, you know. <laughs> um, and and a lot of rigs will run two or three. The, the big film rigs for big movies are probably two or three hundred thousand wow. dollars a piece, wow. you know, to to have them. So it, it it's a quite a it's quite a process. And it's fascinating. A lot of companies now though they're starting to build them. The new Canons, the little X, XF. Um, one oh fives or whatever, or three. These yeah, are the prosumer, prosumer. They're prosumer. Consumer. They're yeah. about four thousand mm -hmm. dollars. But one of the things they did is they, if they have an optical image stabilization, you know, the OIS or whatever, or iOS, and um, if you put it into a three D rig, though, you can have it use that to do the fine tuning oh. to tune the cameras because you know, so so you can actually switch it. So they're actually built to be part of a three D rig. Oh, interesting. The new Sony F three is is being built to do a um, you know that you can yes the the Sony uh, we talked to Bob over at the Sony booth this morning. He was yeah. very excited about the F three. That's their four K camera. F three. Well, no, no. The, the, there's the three D. That's the F sixty five. The F three is the inexpensive. So you know that big nine fifty that we right. own. It does pretty much. <laughs> that one does for seventeen. I told him about the nine fifty. Yeah. I said we were the very first. I said Alex Lindsay was the first guy ever to do a ten eighty p podcast. Yeah. No one could watch it. <laughs> he shot it on a Cine Alta. Uh, and and now, uh, so I the F three now for seventeen thousand dollars. You know that was only four years ago. Yeah, yeah. I That's mean, it's amazing. And this is the big year. This is the turn, the turning year where suddenly there's just an immense amount of, of. Um, uh, stuff and, and and the F3 is just one side of it. The NX1 100 they have finally announced the price fifty eight hundred dollars. That's not bad. Film level camera like a film si film size sensor for the Sony. They're doing thirty five millimeter frames now. It's the same sensor as the, the F3 has, just different right. electronics. Wow. Uh, and then you're looking over here, Black Magic. We were over there. Uh, um, they have uh, new video mixers that are incredibly inexpensive. 
Yeah, I want to know about that. Uh, maybe we're going to go over well, there, I, I think, right after we get right off the air. And I will bring my high-quality. Audi. <laughs> You've heard the F3. This is the F-3. It is an iPhone in a metal case <laughs> with a microphone. But I'm going to shoot some video. That The last two of those two clips, they, they were shot with the, uh, the iPhone. I, it's okay. It yeah. just gives you some. It's absolutely. like a little view into the field. Right, absolutely. Uh, we do want to thank the folks at Live View. They give us the amazing capability to stream live from anywhere on this show floor using 3G technologies at Live View Backpack. Alex has one, and I have one. They're just incredible. Alex is going to take his out in the field. When are you going to do that? Uh, for the Pixel right. Core. When we go over there, we're going to be streaming live. Okay, so <laughs> if you, you'll have to switch your stream from Pixel from uh, live.twit.tv to pixelcore.com slash live. Slash live. Uh, and we'll turn that on in a minute, and you can go see that. Uh, we are going to go back to the studio, though, in a little bit and uh, give you our regularly scheduled programming. Uh, is, there a, is there a weird in a weirdo in a beard behind me? Wait, let me look. Just don't. It's him. He's typing in the chat room. There he is. <laughs> I see him laughing. <laughs> he says, in the chat room, he says, turn around and look at the weirdo in the beard. It's him. I didn't oh, call you a weirdo. No, you called you a weirdo. It was somebody else. It was somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's funny. No, you're not a weirdo. Uh, okay. That was the chat room said that. <laughs> It really, I have to say, uh, thanks very much to Roger Ambrose, who is uh, our creative director, the guy who's doing our new studio. He did a spectacular it looks job gorgeous. of designing with smoke and mirrors, a very inexpensive yeah. uh, set that looks like the skybox that uh, CBS would have built. I mean, just incredible. Uh, beautiful. There, there's a Look shot of it. What, where'd we get that shot? That's great. Do we have a camera out there? We did. We did. All right. So it just glows. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, thanks also to Brent Bai, who is, of course, uh, uh, the greatest gaffer in the world who does all the lighting for us. And he did a great job, too. Of course, Lynn Fu and uh, Elaine, Eileen, Elaine, I'm sorry, Eileen Rivera, who uh, came a day early and set this up all yesterday and got it all working. Alex Gumpel has been running the switcher. Burke McQuinn, who uh, drove along with Liz Romero, drove the van down the van. and got all the gear down here. Uh, we've really, uh, we've really stepped it up a little bit, haven't we? Here in As, I mean Grass Valley. Uh, it's, it's it's saying Ass Valley again. <laughs> <laughs> I just I want to I want somebody to screen capture it. That's all I want to say. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, <laughs> it is the band leader acknowledging the group because I'll tell you what, there would be no song without this amazing band that uh, is behind us, doing such a great job. We really, <laughs> we really have. <laughs> a wonderful group of people here, uh, and we are taking it to the next level, I must say. So we will be, uh, <laughs> we will be back uh, uh, tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., uh, and broadcasting live from uh, the National Association of Broadcasters show, the NAB show, in Las Vegas, Nevada. I hope I'll see you at the, uh, at the photo shoot, if you're uh, the photo walk, if you're in the area uh, tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, and are we gonna, what are we going to send it back to? Do you want to send it back to the studio? Are they there? We'll just go into a rerun. Yeah, and okay. And as a note, we'll be streaming live from the Media Motion Ball tonight between 6 and 7. So we'll be interviewing lots of... So the Media Motion Ball is one of the big, uh, like a lot of the media professionals get together and have and just mingle. And they, they oh. have a little event, but there's... It's is like this, the who's who of like media. Is this like CES in terms of the parties? Or yeah, there's deal? parties every night. Oh, there's a so bunch there's, of parties. So see, Media right. Motion's one of them. Adobe's got a party tonight. We're going to try to get over there. I'm actually playing in the all-in... Charity uh, poker. Poker. Can I come to this party and watch you? Yeah, you come. You come watch me lose. I don't know how to play. I mean, I, you know, I, I, mean, <laughs> I, I look over your shoulder Texas and Hold'em. say, yeah. ah, "Don't yeah, do that." Do it. Yeah. So it's it's what over at doing? the uh, Hard Rock. Oh, that sounds I'll send fun. You some information. Oh, and, that sounds uh, fun. But yeah, so it's a six, that that starts at seven, eight o'clock, and I think that that goes till late. Well, it probably. goes until I get eliminated. I mean, <laughs> for me, it goes until I get eliminated. It's going to go late. I will be eliminated early because I don't know what I'm doing. So, um, this sounds great. They ask, "Are you going to stream that?" Uh, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna bring the. I don't the think they take over. very well to it in Vegas when you come and have a guy, your guy, with a camera behind the other people. That's so the key. Is, is I'm gonna have my iPhone right here, and then the camera will just wander around oddly oh. around and get, get better angles of me. See, oh. this, is, this, is, this is my secret. Oh. So anyway, and then and then tomorrow night, of course, we've got the super meet. Um, uh, I doubt we're gonna be able to stream anything from the actual event, but we'll stream stuff around it. 
Um, tomorrow night is the we, we might be able to get into the AJA party, which is at the Hard Rock. That'd be big, great. Big party. So you're, we're going to have a lot of coverage between the two of us. Yeah. And again, it's pixelcore.com slash live yeah. for the pixelcore.com so, stuff. So yeah, that's yeah, and that'll be coming on and off. Well, I'll probably tweet it most of the time when we're we're about to go live. I'll tweet that hey, we're we're turning the th we're turning the feed on because it won't be as consistent as Twit. It'll be, you know, an hour here, an hour there, yeah. you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Uh, and will you watch the chat room? I am, yeah. So we will watch uh, the Twit Live chat room. I'll make sure that our uh, that Carolyn, who's our producer, oh, is watching be great. both chat rooms. Oh, that'd so be that, great. So that when we're doing it, we can get questions. Oh, coming that's in. great. Now the Microsoft Mix conference is going on. Thank you for reminding me, D Stu ninety nine. It is going on right now across the across the road. Uh, Paul Therat is down here, and we're going to do Windows Weekly, and he's going to bring some people, I think, from the Mix conference. What time is the Windows Weekly broadcast? Is it Wednesday at eleven a.m. Pacific, two p.m. Eastern? So we're flip-flopping the uh, normal time. We'll put security now on Thursday or something like that. Okay. So Windows Weekly will be here in uh, Vegas, and we will have an update from Mix, which is Microsoft's web conference. So, uh, you know, if you go to live.twit.tv, click the calendar link, uh, you'll see the, all the stuff that we're planning uh, so you can see what our coverage is. Uh, we will not be covering the Apple Final Cut Pro announcement, but, but Alex is going to be the one on this one. Yeah, we'll, gonna, be, we'll be talking about the heat. it. <laughs> and we'll cover it again uh, next week. So we're going to send it back to the studio. Again, thanks to everybody who made this uh, really beautiful set for us. And thanks to Grass Valley. They paid thousands of dollars to turn off these lights above us. That's one of the reasons we look so good. We don't have the ugly uh, convention hall lights above us. I think next time at CES, we're going to have to pay to turn the lights off. I don't like you it. You know, or just get a slingshot. Ding! I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll be right back here 9 a.m. tomorrow, Pacific, 12 noon Eastern, on live.twit.tv. We take you back now to the Twit Cottage, and John, take it away. Mm -hmm.